I got no. Let's call the. Zoning, zoning meeting. Back on her speaker here. All right. The, tonight's zoning meeting is being held in accordance with the applicable laws governing remote meetings. With some council members re participating remotely, the requirements of notice, access, and minutes are being met as required by law. The public and the media are invited to view this meeting on the government channel, the city's Facebook page, on the city's YouTube page, or being present with us in the chamber. So I'd like to begin with... The zoning meeting is being held in accordance with the applicable laws Sorry. governing remote meetings. With some council members participating remotely, the requirements of notice, access, and minutes are being met as required by law. We're getting, we're working out all the kinks early. Yes. All right, I'm going to ask that we begin our introductions with our city clerk and then the members that are joining us in the chamber, as well as our zoning chairperson who is here today. And then we will go to those that are joining with us remotely. So, Madam Clerk. Matt Newton, District 5. Dimple Ashmera at large. By Lyle serving as mayor. Larkin Eggleston, District 1. Ms. Samuel. Zoning Chair Kiba Samuel. Yes. And our, we'll be joined by our um, city attorney for zoning, for zoning Ms. Tariq Hagler-Gray, and I believe Mr. Phipps is joining us and is coming to the dais at this time. So we'll now go to those um, council members who are logged in virtually, and I'm going to ask them if I don't have the screen that shows their pictures on the TV on the monitor. So if someone can help me with that, then we will go with, um, begin with those. Ms. Johnson, will you start us off? Sure, happy holidays, Renee Johnson, District 4. Victoria Watlington, District 3. Julia Isolt, Mayor Pro Tem and serving at large. Dark Macquarie, District 6. All right, I believe that's everyone that's joining us for this meeting. As others come in, Mr. Phipps, would you like to? Judge Phipps at large. All right, thank you, everyone. All right, we begin our meeting with an invocation or an expression that solemnizes our conversations and our deliberations. We understand that this is something that is about the way that we would work together and um, recognize that this is a, um, this, an invocation that others may choose to participate in or may choose not to participate in. And so Council Member Johnson is being recognized for our invocation tonight. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Luke 2.14 tells us, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Please bless and strengthen and hold those that are apart from loved ones this holiday season. And please help us as public servants ensure the safety and well-being of all of our residents so that everyone may have a joyous holiday season without fear and darkness. Let the radiant light of this holiday season shine upon each and every one of us. Amen. Thank Amen. you very much. And if we will now stand to recite our Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So tonight is our zoning meeting, and I just want to walk through quickly the process for zoning applications and acknowledge that we're beginning early today because we have a number of decisions that we're going to be making as well as hearings. The process begins when there are applications submitted to the planning staff for review. There are two types of cases that we'll have tonight, first decisions and then the hearings. 
The decisions are, in are for cases which have already held a public hearing, and we have no further dialogue except that from the council um, as they deliberate on the decision. The hearings are um, where we are that in, well, hearings are applications that have been made, and anyone wishing to speak is asked to see the city clerk before the start of the hearing. But we also have speakers that are here in, pres in person, and then we have speakers that have signed up virtually. Um, there will be a staff presentation during the hearings, and the petitioner and those in favor get three minutes to pre combine to present a case unless their opponents signed up to speak. And I believe we have four to five um, hearings with the opposition. If the staff is in opposition, the petitioner gets 10 minutes, the opponent gets 10 minutes, and the petitioner gets a two-minute rebuttal. If no one is opposed or signed up to speak, staff provides a short presentation, the public hearing is closed, and the next hearing is open. The petitions go to the Zoning Committee of the Planning Commission for review and recommendation. I'd like to recognize Kiva Samuel, and she will explain the process and the next steps for the Zoning Committee. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of council, members of public. My name is Kiva Samuel. I serve as chair of the Zoning Committee of the Charlotte-Mecklenburg Planning Commission. The Zoning Committee will meet on Tuesday, January 4th, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. to deliberate and make decisions on the petitions being heard tonight. That January 4th meeting will not be a continuation of tonight's public hearing. There will be no opportunity for public input unless and until a member of the public, I'm sorry, member, a member of the committee has a question that is best answered by a member of the public. That meeting will stream um, on the City of Charlotte Planning Design and Development's Facebook page, and it will be held virtually. Joining us via live stream on the government channel and or the city's YouTube channel uh, or the city's Facebook page are our zoning committee members, Andrew Blumenthal, Astrid Chirinos, John Ham, Courtney Rhodes, Sam Spencer, Douglas Welton. Again, I am your chair, Kiba Samuel, and I am with you through the evening should you council have any questions. Thank you. All right, thank you very much for those volunteers that support us in this effort and the planning commission and the planning, especially our zoning committee. Um, the next action that we have is um, we do have deferrals tonight that we have to approve and adopt. So the very, I'm going to read the list. The first one is item number two, 2021-019 from Fifth Third Bank. Um, the next and following that, item three, 29, petition 2019-179 um, by Ron Stanley Verity Holmes. Number five, petition 2020-181 Albemarle Property. Um, item 13. 20, petition 2021-103, Providence Group Capital. Item 29, petition 2021-014, Whitestone Holdings. All of these are deferrals requested until January the 18th. May I have a motion? We have one, we have I'm one sorry, more. Mr. Yeah. No problem. We have one more. Uh, item 40. Item 40, thank you. Which is petition 2021-141 by the Drakeford Company. Uh, it's approximately 0.33 acres on the east side of 34th. Uh, northwest of the plaza and east of Matheson, that's in Council District 1, deferring the hearing to January 18th. All right, so. Motion to approve all deferrals as, as listed. All right, we have a motion by Mr. Eggleston, followed by Ms. Hashmira as a second. Any discussion on the deferrals? Any questions? Hearing none, we'll have a roll call vote. We do roll call votes when um, we have vir members attending virtually. Um, Mr. Phipps, you lead us off this evening. Yes. Um, Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Winston. Um, is Mr. Mr. Winston has joined us. Mr. Yes. Winston. Has Mr. Graham joined us? So we'll, when Mr. Graham joins us, we'll let us know. So um, we do have, we will now go into our decision section of our meeting. And the first item on our agenda for a decision <coughs> 
does actually have a change following the zoning committee vote. So we'll talk a little bit about what that means. Um, when there is a change that's made after the zoning committee's recommendation, the council must adopt this with a two, three quarters um, affirmative action to adopt the changes. All of the changes that we talk about tonight have the staff recommendation has been that they are minor and do not warrant additional review by the zoning committee. So as we go through this, the changes that we have are on this first item is petition rezoning petition 2020-038 by Clover Group for approximately 9.9 .9 acres on the west side of Steel Creek Road in District 3, current zoning single family residential, proposed zoning multifamily residential conditional. The zoning committee voted four to three to recommend approval. Staff does not recommend approval of this um, petition in its current form. There are also changes that have been made follow after the petition had gone to the zoning committee. Mr. Patton will read that change, and then we will vote first on the change, and then we'll vote on the decision. Mr. Patton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The following change was made, and this really was a, a site design change that the access changed from Cedar Crossing Drive, which is an access road to a residential community. They modified that to now provide access off of Steel Creek Road. Uh, and Cedar Crossings Drive was, like I said, a local street. And the community had some concerns about access there, so that had switched back to Steel Creek Road. Uh, that's a, a generally minor change. We don't feel like that would change the outcome of uh, the zoning committee, so don't feel that that needs to go back to uh, them for consideration. And so at this point, uh, the petition would be up for a decision uh, pending the, that change uh, being approved uh, to not go back. Motion to not send back. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Eggleston, second by Ms. Ashmira. Is there any discussion on not sending it back to the Zoning Commission? Hearing no discussion. Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ashmira? Yes. All right. Did I miss anyone? If I have not, then the, um, we will now move to a motion for the decision on the um, petition as it stands. So um, we will go with Watlington. that. Watlington moved to deny. All right. Ms. Watlington has made a motion to deny. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Mr. Phipps made to deny. And so with that, we will have... Um, Ms. Watlington, um, do you have us in recognizing Ms. Watlington? Sure, thank you. So first I want to just recognize the Clover Group and the uh, Huntington Forest neighborhood who has worked for a long time on this one trying to come to an acceptable place. So I do appreciate that work. Um, I do want to note that the zoning committee of the Steel Creek Resident Association did support this particular petition um, in favor of potential uh, by right. However, the community at large has been initially largely against this and then um, still very much divided among those most heavily impacted who live on Highway 160 and in the uh, adjacent neighborhood. Um, unfortunately, they could not come to agreement with staff or, uh, excuse me, the neighbors could not come to agreement with the developers, nor could staff when it comes to infrastructure and traffic here, uh, recognizing that there is an opportunity to increase senior living in Still Creek. And because of the traffic patterns of senior living, they did feel like it wouldn't be quite as much traffic. However, um, the future signalization of this intersection is subject to another rezoning um, and also the badly needed widening of NCDOT 160 improvements are nowhere on the horizon. Um, if this rezoning is not improved or is, is not approved, there's been no indication that uh, that the developers would build to entitlement, and there doesn't appear to be any market um, readiness to build towards the entitlement. So right now, it would look like no increase in the interim, um, and we're hopeful that we'll get infrastructure investments soon. For those reasons, I'll be not supporting this petition. All right, thank you, Ms. Watlington. I'd like to recognize Mr. Eggleston. Um, Mr. Patino, I just wanted to make sure staff had reiterated to the petitioner the consequences of a failed vote, which it looks like this 
is headed towards. I intend to support the district rep here, but it's unusual that a petitioner, knowing they're going to fail in a vote like this, would subject themselves to the two-year moratorium that comes with. We've, we've communicated with the Clover Group on several occasions that this has been deferred for uh, multiple times throughout the process and have conveyed that uh, throughout those conversations that a uh, you know, denial vote results in that two-year two time period of waiting. Uh, and we did follow up this week and request if they wanted to move forward as is, and, and they did confirm that. So they you know, were ready to, to move forward to try and, and get a, a resolution on this. All right. Ms. Ajmira? Yes, I, I was just going to make the same comment um, as Councilmember Eggleston. Uh, is anyone here from from the petitioner's team? Oh, okay, so are you okay with that being? Well, we have to bring them down if, okay. if they choose to speak. Okay, would you like to speak? No. Uh, okay. I, uh, Okay, can we? He can ask. Can, can he can answer questions. questions. Yes. Could you come to the podium, please? Hi. Hi. I just if want you to could state your name and and the who you represent. Uh, my name is Shane Forrest, and I re represent the Clover Development based in Buffalo, New York. Thank you, Mr. Forrest. So I just want to confirm, are you okay with not deferring this and continuing to move forward, which means it could be denied and there would be two years moratorium? Yes. Are you? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Phipps. Uh, vote uh, uh, yes. Yes to deny. All right. All right, Mr. Driggs. Uh, I, I had the same issue as the others, and in light of what we've just heard, I vote yes to deny. All right. Hearing no further questions or discussion, we'll now go to our vote. Um, the motion is to deny the petition. Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? No. Mr. Bakari? No. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. All right. The motion to um, deny is approved. The next item is item number six. Yeah, you're done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, item number six is petition 2021-28 by Children's Klein Properties. Petition to develop 287 acres in two development areas. Development area one for 274 acres proposes 2.7 2.7 million square feet of warehousing, distribu warehouse distribution, logistics office, and manufacturing. Development area two, 36.6 acres, proposes up to 488 multifamily um, residential units. And there were changes made after the zoning committee's recommendation. I'll ask Mr. Petten to read those changes, and then we will have a motion to, following his presentation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, item six had a change after zoning committee and that refers to a conditional note uh, involving uh, dedication of some green space. Uh, they added a conditional note that would dedicate a minimum of 12 acres uh, within the open space areas to Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation for the installation of greenway trails and associated shelters and or seating areas. Uh, staff believes that change is minor, wouldn't warrant any additional review by the zoning committee and hopes to address one of the outstanding items uh, that was brought up during the rezoning process. Thank you. Motion to not send back. We have a motion from Mr. Second. Eggleston, second. second by Mr. Winston. Um, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Driggs, I think, said that. Um, we both said it. Yeah. We both said it. Thank Easily you very much. Changed. All right, any discussion on the motion for yeah. Ms. Ajmira? Oh, not on this motion. Oh, yes, on the I motion said. for the change being. Absolutely. Madam Mayor. Yes. 
All right. Um, so this is on the motion for the change that's not to be sent back to the zoning commissioner. Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. All right, now we move to the discussion of the recommendation. Do I have a motion on the recommendation to approve this petition and accept the Zoning Committee Statement of Consistency as our own? Do I have a motion? Second. Mr. Driggs, followed by Mayor Pro Tem. So with that, um, we're ready for discussion. I believe I had Ms. Mayor, Ms. Ajmira followed by the Mayor Pro Tem. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. So this is a big rezoning that's in front of us. Uh, so I just want to highlight a few things about this development. First is a $300 million project that's going to bring 2,500 middle income jobs. And I appreciate petitioner's effort to address the issues that were raised by Parks and Rec for greenway trails and for shelter and gathering areas. I appreciate the dedication of 12 acres for Parks and Rec. Uh, also, I appreciate the work that's been done to address the infrastructure improvements. Uh, so I support this petition. Uh, there, as a result of this uh, discussion uh, and negotiation, um, I had a conversation with our county commissioners, Mayor Pro Temp. I think we do need to look at our process when it comes to get feedback from Parks and Rec to ensure that those feedback has been received in a timely fashion. Um, but other than that, I think uh, kudos to the petitioner for a job well done. Thank you. All right, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to um, reiterate what Ms. Ashmere just said that it was great to see the petitioner working with um, with the community and with county commissioners who were asking for space, more space for um, open space parks, uh, greenways, and they they did that and they were complimented by Commissioner uh, Powell and others for being willing to listen and add that green space. So thank you for that. All right, Mr. Phipps. Uh, yes, uh, one concern that I have about this project, which I'm, I'm going to support, but I want to make sure that um, consistent with the traffic impact uh, study that egress and, 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 and in and out coming from the site from, from the Ridge Road location, I want to make sure that the truck traffic would, uh, would, uh, would not use the left-hand turn going towards single-family development on Ridge Road. Uh, I would much rather, consistent with the T uh, transportation uh, impact study, for, the, for those trucks to go right heading towards uh, the interchange of 485 leading up to 77. So uh, I, I'm hoping that um, that, uh, that that will materialize and that will be less impact to those uh, residential developments that. Uh, uh, that would be, uh, um, if you exit, uh, make a left turn on Ridge Road, that they would, could it be impacted, as well as two schools, Stony, Stony, uh, Stony Creek uh, Elementary, as well as Bradford, uh, right in the path going towards uh, Tryon Street, where there's another interchange leading to uh, 85 and points uh, uh, north up on Tryon. So hopefully uh, we could uh, make sure that uh, that traffic, import, uh, traffic impact study uh, is true to form, that those traffic patterns mm -hmm. will lead to less uh, uh, truck traffic, heavy truck traffic in those single family residential zones. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Phipps. Um, is there anyone else to be recognized? If not, we have a motion to adopt I'm this here. petition. I'm sorry, who is? Jones. It's Ed Driggs. It's Mr. Driggs, thank you. Yes, I just wanted to say there are there are some issues about this that uh, make it complicated locally, and I appreciate that the district four representatives are willing to support it 
I made the motion because I felt that, uh, for the reasons mentioned, there is a city-wide interest here that is compelling, and we shouldn't go ahead. I just appreciate that the former and current district reps have been sensitive to the local issues as well. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else to be recognized? Yes, ma'am. My hand is up also. All right. Ms. Johnson. Thank you. Um, as you all know or may recall, I've been very vocal about uh, the opposition to this um, petition due to the infrastructure. And I, I find it interesting that we just denied a petition because of that. However, this petitioner has worked very hard in working with uh, CDOT and an NCDLT to make traffic improve. Um, there are more improvements uh, than would be done otherwise if, if this were um, approved by right. Again, there are 2,500 jobs. Um, they've agreed to uh, donate 12 acres to the county within 62 acres of open space. There's strong road improvements. Um, and there's also, they've also committed to 5% affordable housing. So um, yeah. I've reconsidered uh, my support uh, because we, we can't, we can't, while we can ask developers to contribute and I appreciate the traffic improvements, the onus is on, you know, NCDOT and CDOT for us as well to improve the infrastructure in these areas. So, um, for that reason, I will be supporting the petition. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. We have a motion on the floor to adopt the zoning committee statement of consistency and approve this petition. I'm going to go ahead and begin the roll call vote. Um, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Um, Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. The motion passes. The next item is item number seven. And again, we have changes that um, have been made. And I'm going to ask Mr. Petten, and then we'll, I'll look for a motion on whether or not the changes are, in, are not significant, significant to return to the Zoning Committee. Mr. Petten. Yes, thank you. Uh, this petition made some changes to uh, mainly their open space commitment. They provided some additional notes to commit to a minimum of two acres of open space area throughout the site. Uh, we do expect that that's going to be a larger amount. Uh, UMUD requirements provide open space based on square footage of development. So as that square footage goes up, the open space requirements go up. So we do think that'll end up being more. Uh, but the petition does also commit to a minimum of one acre of that open space being publicly accessible in perpetuity. Uh, and they further clarify what the uh, what the meaning of the open space will be and really would describe to the term in the ordinance, but also just for further clarification, it includes things like passive and active open space, such as parks, athletic fields, nature trails, bike and scooter paths, internal walkways, food court areas, outdoor dining areas, greenways, buffers, gathering places, amphitheaters, outdoor performance spaces, uh, preserves, plazas, wildlife, hubs and habitats, and other similar open and obstructed areas of land. So again, it's committing to a minimum of two acres of open space. One acre of that uh, would be publicly accessible in perpetuity. Staff feels that that's a minor change, addresses the outstanding issue raised uh, in the staff analysis, and does not warrant additional review by the Zoning Committee. Thank Motion you. Motion not send back. Second. Second. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Eggleston, second by Ms. Ajmira. Um, is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll go with the roll call vote. Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. All right. With that now, um, do I have a motion to adopt the Zoning Committee's recommendation as, as our own and to adopt this and approve this petition? So moved. Second. Second. Ms. Watlington followed by Ms. Ajmira. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, we'll start the roll call vote. Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? 
Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. The next item is item number eight, rezoning petition 2021-087 by Novant Health for approximately 1.9 acres located at the intersection of Amherst Place and Lillington, west of East 3rd. It's in District 1. The current zoning is office conditional. The proposed zoning is mixed-use development conditional Pedscape overlay. The zoning committee and the staff recommend approval of this petition, and um, I don't believe there are any changes to this one. So with that, we'll, do I have a motion to adopt the Zoning Committee statement of consistency as our own and approve this petition? Motion to adopt and approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, and before we begin, I'd just like to recognize, um, usually I will say that I am on the board of Novant Health but this, my term has ended, so I am no longer on their board. And even though I don't participate in the vote, I would like to that be entered into the record that I am no longer participating as a trustee of that hospital. Um, but they've been very nice and kind in recognizing my service, so that was pretty cool too. All right, so with that, is there any um, discussion on the petition, or the decision? Move to approve. All right, we have a motion to adopt the petition and the statement of consistency is our own and approved. Ms. Ajmira and a second? Well, we already, had we already it. did that. Sorry, I did not write it down. Is there any further discussion? All right, hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham, is Ms. has Mr. Graham joined us? Not yet. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Um, I have to go back to the, um, the petition um, number five um, is where we denied the petition. We did not Even adopt a statement, I'm sorry. Number four. four. Number four. We did not adopt. We need to adopt a statement of consistency for the 2020-038 petition that says it was not accepted. It's a negative, I guess. So Dave will read the statement, yep. and we will adopt the statement of inconsistency as our own. Yeah, thank Mr. you. Just Patton. to clear it up for folks, the consistency statement that's on the screen was from the zoning committee. They voted to recommend approval. Staff wasn't supportive. Our consistency. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Point of order. The screen that I see still says 2020-38 by Clover Group. Am I the only one who sees that? That's, Forgive me, Dave. I don't mean to interrupt. That's what we're discussing, yes. Ms. Ms. Uh, Watlington, did you, did you hear us? Yeah, I think I might be a little bit confused. <coughs> He, Mr. Ms. Putin's going to explain it. He's going to explain that we have to have a statement of consistency, of inconsistency, and they're going to read the statement that the staff recommended under Got their it. not approval of the item. So we Got have it. to enter thank that into the record. The attorney just reminded me. So thank, thank you very you. much, Ms. Hagler-Gray and Mr. Petton. Thank you. So the consistency statement that was provided was that the petition was inconsistent with low-density residential land use recommended for the site and the surrounding area. Uh, that the continued increase in higher density development without adequate public facilities and infrastructure of roads, schools, and parks to serve that will have a detrimental impact on the quality of life of area residents. <coughs> the Steel Creek Road NC-160 widening project was put on hold by the NC Department of Transportation, pushing this critical piece of transportation further out into the future and also reducing the density to be more in line with the recommended four dwelling units per acre in the adopted area plan would better facilitate, facilitate long-term land use goals in the area. That was uh, the consistency statement that staff had provided to not recommend in favor of the petition. Uh, if council would like to adopt that as their own, we can put that in the record. Uh, what was adopted through the previous action was zoning, consist zoning committee's consistency statement, which was different because uh, that recommended approval. So just need to do a little a housekeeping. Motion to adopt Someone. staffs. And we have a second by the mayor pro tem. Any discussion on the item? So we will go Mr. Phipps. Yes. Mr. Winston. No. Mr. Bakari. Yes. Mr. Driggs. Yes. Mr. Eggleston. Yes. Ms. Johnson. 
Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ejmira? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so we did get through n item nine, I believe. So we're at 10, or we have to vote on nine. So we're, let's see, we have we have the motion that the, the changes. So we, we voted we on eight. We voted the changes. Oh, I think we did eight. We approved eight. We, we okay. just got, started yeah, we just got nine. through eight. So, so let's go to nine. item number nine. It is, as I read, um, the 2021-92 by the Charlotte Mecklenburg Hospital Authority for approximately 14.2 acres on the south side of McDowell Street. It's in District 1. The um, proposed zoning is recommended as MUD O PED with five-year vested rights. Um, the zoning committee and the staff recommend approval of this petition. And um, I'm looking to make sure there were there any changes on there this were, petition. Yes. All right, so we'll hear from the staff to read the changes, and we'll have a motion first on that. Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this petition had three changes to their conditional notes. Uh, one was a modification to note 5Z uh, that would uh, remove needed approval from Covenant Presbyterian Church for traffic calming measures. Uh, they also updated the phasing for traffic calming to be installed prior to the first certificate of occupancy for a new building that would be constructed in phase 1A rather than 1B. So essentially they move those, uh, that phasing up a phase or, or a sub phase. Uh, they also modified note 6C, uh, item number two and item A, A, I, to allow exterior passageways, which would include both pedestrian and emergency vehicle access to achieve breaks or interruptions in the building wall lengths of 450 feet or longer. And the last one was modified uh, note 8C. That would now read subject to the approval of the City of Charlotte Urban Forestry Department, CDOT, and NCDOT. Any new street trees planted along the site's frontage on East Moorhead Street shall be spaced in a manner that is consistent with the spacing of the existing trees located on the west side of East Moorhead Street directly across uh, from the site. So just uh, better aligning the street trees along that frontage on Moorhead to match what's on the other side of the road. Uh, out of those three notes, staff doesn't feel that any of those are uh, enough to send back to a warrant additional review by the zoning committee uh, and feel they are minor and they were made to address community input uh, and outstanding issues. So again, we don't feel those need to go back to zoning committee. We have a motion to accept back. Mr. Eggleston. Second. Ms. Ajmira has a second. Any discussion? Discussion. Hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps on the yes. motion? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Ms. Johnson? Yes. yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. Okay, now we go to the um, the petition, the re actual adoption and approval of this petition. All right, does the council accept the statement of consistency from the zoning committee as our own and does, and approve this petition? Motion to adopt and approve. All right, Mr. Eggleston, followed by, with a second, please. Second. Second. Mr. Phipps. Mm -hmm. All right, is there any discussion? Hearing no, hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps. Yes. Mr. Winston. Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. All right. The next item on our agenda is item number 10. Rezoning petition 2021-95 by Ken Joe, approximately 2.8 acres located on the southeast interchange of 77. It's in District 1. The current zoning is light industrial, conditional. The proposed zoning is light industrial. The zoning committee voted 5 to 1 to approve the petition, and staff recommends approval of the petition. So is there a motion to adopt the state zoning committee statement of consistency as our own and approve the petition? Motion to adopt and approve. Second. Second by Ms. Ash, Mr. Larkin, Mr. Eggleston and Ms. Sajmira second. Is there any discussion? All right, hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps. Yes. Mr. Winston. No. Mr. Bakari. Yes. Mr. Driggs. Yes. Mr. Eggleston. Yes. 
Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. Thank you. The next item is item number 11. Um, this is a rezoning petition 2021-097 by Matt and me. I tried. I did. For approximately 56 acres located near the Plaza and W.T. Harris Boulevard in District 5. The current zoning is R3 and MX mixed use. Proposed zoning is re multifamily residential conditional. The zoning committee and the staff recommend approval of this petition. Do I have a motion to adopt the zoning committee statement of consistency as well as approve this petition? Motion to adopt and approve. Second. All right, we have a motion to adopt and approve item in this petition by, is there any discussion? All right, hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. You're doing so well for so long, Mayor. I'm mad at me. What? I'm mad at me. I know it's mad at me, but would, what would you do without me saying it wrong? I mean, you know, I've got a, I got a record. I got to keep it. Okay, Mr. Bakari. Yes. Mr. Driggs. Uh, season's greetings to Madam E. Holm, and it's a proud tradition by now. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Eggleston. Yes. Mr. Miss Johnson. Yes. Mr. Newton. Yes. Miss Watlington. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. Ms. Ajmira. Yes. Thank you very much. The next item is item number 12, petition 2021-102 by Ardent Acquisitions for approximately 6.9 acres on south side of Hamilton Street near west of Statesville. It's in District 2. The current zoning is single family residential. The proposed zoning is urban residential conditional. The zoning committee and the staff recommend approval. Do I have a motion to adopt the zoning committee statement of consistency as our own and a motion to approve the petition? Motion to adopt and approve. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All right, we have a second. And then is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps. Yes. Mr. Winston. Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. All right. Item 13 was deferred, so we'll go to item 14, rezoning petition 2021-108 by Inquirer. Um, construction for approximately seven acres west of Corny Drive, and it's in District 2. The current zoning is our single-family residential. The proposed zoning is single-family residential. The zoning committee and the staff recommend approval of this petition. Is there a motion to adopt the zoning committee statement of consistency as our own and to approve this petition? Motion to adopt and approve. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second on item 14. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. The next item is item number 15. Petition 2021-114 by Appaloosa Real Estate for a location of approximately three and a half acres on the southwest side of Ridge Road in District 4. Current zoning is single family residential. The proposed zoning is business distribution conditional. The zoning committee and the staff recommends approval of this petition. Do I have a motion to accept the zoning committee statement of consistency and approve this petition? Second. All right, we have a second for a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? All right, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. 
The next item is item number 16, rezoning petition 2021-115 by Ram Realty Acquisitions for approximately 8.7 acres located on both the north and, side, north and south side of State Street. It's in District 2. The current zoning is general industrial. The proposed zoning is mixed-use development optional. The zoning committee and the staff recommend approval of this petition. Do I have a motion to accept the zoning committee statement of consistency as our own and approve the petition? Motion to adopt. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Graham, you've joined us. Thank you very much. All right. With that, with the item, with um, the item 16, we'll have a roll call. Is there any speaker on the item? Hearing none. Mr. Phipps. Yes. Mr. Winston. Yes. Mr. Bakari. Yes. Mr. Driggs. Yes. Mr. Eggleston. Yes. Mr. Graham. Mr. Graham. And is, is, is uh, Mr. Graham, you're on mute. No, he disappeared. Oh, no? Okay. All right. We'll come back. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Newton. Yes. Ms. Watlington. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. Pro All right, Ms. Ajmira. Yes. All right, that passes. Thank you very much. All right, our next petition is item number 17. Again, there have been changes made following the Zoning Committee's um, recommendation on item 17. So I'd ask Mr. Patton to tell us what those changes are. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this petition made uh, three changes after Zoning Committee's recommendation. One was in regards to EDEs Type 1 and Type 2, uh, mainly for Type 2. If on-premise alcoholic beverages service would be included, then food service would also be must also be provided. Uh, another note that was modified was adding language to state that outdoor amplified sound would not be permitted. And then one other optional provision was, uh, or the optional provision that was listed uh, regarding setbacks for the existing building was further clarified to say that if that building would be uh, demolished, any new construction would then comply with mud setback requirements. So just stating that they would meet setbacks in the current ordinance versus what's out there currently on the property. So uh, those three notes, uh, staff believes are minor, do not warrant any additional review by the zoning committee. Uh, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Motion to not send back. Second. We have a motion and a second that the changes are minor and do not require being sent back to the zoning committee. Is there any discussion? Mr. Eggleston? Just to note that the changes that were all just listed were ones that were directly in response to the concerns voiced, um, all of which now, uh, I believe, have been addressed. So. All right. Thank you very much. So with that, Mr. Phipps, did you have a question or a comment? Yeah. So does that mean that the, uh, the, the, the um, person who was so eloquently um, t uh, spoke to us at the uh, hearing, his concerns have been addressed and, and, and his concerns have been allayed by... You have effectively things. killed the juke joint, okay. Mr. Phipps. It can no longer be a juke joint. Okay. So is it, it's going to be a yoga studio? Thank you. Okay, we have several uses that have been, have been prescribed for the owner, and they can choose among the council choices. All right, so with that, for the motion um, to not send it back, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. All right. So now we go to um, item 17, and we 18. do we? I'm sorry, 18. No, we, 17. That was just to not send back. That was not to send back. Do I have a motion to adopt the statement of consistency as our own and approve this petition? Mm -hmm. Motion to adopt and approve. I we have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, yeah, Mr. Phipps. I'm sorry. Did you, have, Mr. Driggs? Did you say? You have a question? Yes, I, I had a question. All right, Mr. Driggs is recognized. So in the same vein as the question that was just asked, I, I thought the uh, the neighbor made a pretty good case. Is, has, has that neighbor actually withdrawn the objection to this petition, or have we just done our best to uh, be responsive? Do you want me to answer that, or Mr. Penn to answer that? No, I think Mr. Eggleston, if you could let us know. 
I think we've addressed all the issues that were brought forward there around noise, around hours of operation, around potentially creating a, a site that could be used simply as a bar, um, and there have been accommodations made as it relates to trash and a vent fan uh, that might come out of a, a kitchen operation. So uh, I think that we have, have largely addressed all those concerns. Um, I'm sure that he might still wish his house were a little further away from the building, but I think we have made significant and meaningful progress on every concern that was raised. So your recommendation to us is that we have been sufficiently responsive even if the, the uh, person raising the objection isn't fully satisfied. Is that a fair statement? Yes, I think the petitioner has been very responsive. Okay, yeah. Any other, Thank you. Any other comment or question? Uh, I just... All right, Ms. Esmira? Yeah. Uh, you know, when petitioner comes to us and works with the community and comes to the middle ground, um, I appreciate that so that we don't have to make that decision whether to support or deny it, is to work with the community and address their concerns. So thank, thank you, Councilmember Eggleston, for working with the community. We have gotten many emails on the concerns, and all of them have been addressed. So uh, that's, that speaks a volume to the petitioner's uh, negotiation and ability to work with uh, community. Thank you. All right. Um, any other comment? Hearing none, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Ms. Johnson? No. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ashmira? Yes. All right, thank you. The next item is item number 18, petition 2021-117 by Jeffrey Westcoff. Approximately 22, 21 acres located west of the intersection of Moss Road and York Ridge Drive in District 3. The current zoning is multifamily residential conditional. The proposed zoning is multifamily residential. The Zoning Commission and the staff recommend approval of this petition. Um, do I have a motion to accept the Zoning Committee Statement of Consistency as our own and approve this petition? So moved. Mr. Phipps, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Eggleston? All right. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps? I'm sorry, Madam Mayor. I'm sorry. Okay. Ms. Watlington? Yeah, I just had a quick question for Dave. Forgive me, I believe we talked about this one, but I just wanted to make sure. Can you refresh me exactly what is the intent here? I feel like it was just to add a couple of extra units. There's already a full-grown neighborhood here, correct? Mr. Patton, did you hear Ms. Watlington? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and that's, that's correct. There was just a request to use some of the existing uh, space that they still had within the apartment community now to uh, add some additional units. I'm trying to get an idea on, on what the estimated unit was. This was a conventional petition, so uh, we don't have a, a clear count or a commitment to units, but I believe they were going to take some existing uh, space that they had and just add uh, a building or two there to, uh, to that community. So uh, we didn't have any significant concerns. I don't think it warranted any traffic study or traffic concerns. So uh, we, we were supportive of it, as was Zoning Committee. Got it. Thanks. All right. Any further comment or questions on item 18? All right. Um, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? No. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ashmira? Yes. All right. The next item is item 19, petition 2021-121 by Anthony Fox for approximately 1.6 acres on the east side of North Tryon Street near the University City Boulevard. It's in District 4. The current zoning is general business. The proposed zoning is transit-oriented development community center. The zoning committee and the staff recommend approval of this petition. Do I have a motion to adopt the zoning committee's statement of consistency as our own and approve this petition? So moved. Second. 
All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ashmira? Yes. All right, the next item is item number 20. The rezoning petition 2021-122 by Carroll Residential for approximately seven acres located on the south side of Clanton Road in District 3. The current zoning is neighborhood business. The proposed zoning is tied transit, I'm sorry, transit oriented development with the neighborhood center. The zoning committee and the staff recommend approval of this petition. Do I have a motion to adopt the zoning committee statement of consistency as our own and approve this petition? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All right, and we have a motion and a second. And so, any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. The next item is item number 21, petition 2021-123 by Mill Creek Residential Trust for approximately three acres located on the east side of South Tryon, north of Clanton, it's in District 3. The current zoning is transit-oriented development transition. The proposed zoning is transit-oriented development neighborhood center. The, the zoning committee and the staff recommend approval of the petition. Do I have a motion to adopt the zoning committee statement of consistency as our own and approve this petition? So moved. All right. Do I have a second? second? We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira. Yes. The next item is item 22, rezoning petition 2021 by Judson Stringfellow for approximately seven and a half acres located on the west side of W.T. Harris, north of Albemarle Road, close to Hickory Grove. It's in District 5. The current zoning is multifamily residential conditional. The proposed zoning is single family residential. The zoning committee and the staff recommend approval of this petition. Do I have a motion to adopt the zoning committee statement of consistency as our own and approve this petition? Motion to adopt and approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Mr. No. All right. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. All right. The next item is item 23, petition 2021-126 by North Carolina Kenworth for approximately five and a half lake acres located on the south side of East Westinghouse Boulevard, east of Nations Ford. It's in District 3. The current zoning is general industrial conditional. The proposed zoning is light industrial conditional. The zoning staff and the, com the zoning committee and the staff recommend approval of this petition. Do I have a motion to adopt the zoning committee statement of consistency as our own? and approve this petition? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Oh, um, sorry, no. All right, Mr. Winston's recorded as a no vote. All right, Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? 
Yes. Ms. Ajmira. Yes. The motion passed. Um, Mayor, Mayor Lyles. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I was I got mixed up on my notes. Um, actually, I would like to say yes to this um, petition. All right. We'll re record Mr. Winston as an affirmative vote in the affirmative. The next item is item 24 by DRB Group for approximately 5.6 acres located on Rosals Ferry between Coronet and Bungalow Road. It's in District 2. The current zoning is light industrial conditional and multifamily residential. The proposed zoning is urban residential conditional. The zoning committee and the staff recommend approval of this petition. Do I have a motion to adopt the zoning committee statement of consistency as our own and approve this petition? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, um, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. And Ms. Ashmira? Yes. Thank you. The next item is item 25, rezoning petition 2021-131 by West Moorhead Ventures for approximately 0.5 acres located in the eastern quad quadrant of the intersection of Harding and Kenilworth on South King. It's in District 1. The current zoning is mixed-use development optional with a pedestrian overlay. The proposed zoning is office pedestrian overlay. The zoning committee and the staff recommend approval of this petition. They have a motion to accept the zoning committee statement of consistency as our own and approve the petition. Motion to adopt and approve. Second. Second. All right. We have a motion to adopt and approve. Do are there any, is there any discussion? Okay, hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. All right, that item passes. Our next item is item 26, um, petition 2021-132 by EEA Wildwood for approximately 16 and a half acres on the west side of Scaly Bark on close to Woodlawn and Murray Hill Road. It's in District 1. The current zoning is multifamily residential conditional. Um, and increasing the density from 12 to 17. The proposed zoning is for multifamily residential conditional as well. The zoning committee and the staff recommend approval of this petition. Do I have a motion to adopt the zoning committee statement of consistency as our own and approve the petition? Motion to adopt and approve. Second. Do I have a motion and a second? Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. All right, thank you. The next item is item 27, petition number 2021-134 by Greg Finahan. Uh, for approximately 1.4 acres located on the southwest intersection of Statesville and Motorsports Lane south of Cindy. It's in District 2. The current zoning is general business and the proposed zoning is light industrial. The zoning committee voted 5 to 1 to recommend approval of this petition and staff recommends approval of this petition. Do I have a motion to adopt the zoning committee's statement of consistency by the majority as our own and approve this petition? So moved. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Mr. Phipps. Yes. Mr. Winston? No. All right. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? Yes. All right. The next item is item 28, and the petition is 2021-187 by Dowell Finch for approximately 27.3 acres east of Pavilion Boulevard. 
North of Harris Houston and North Tryon is in District 4. The current zoning is mixed use district conditional. The proposed zoning is single family residential. The zoning committee voted to approve as well as the staff recommends approval. Do I have a motion to adopt the zoning, the zoning committee statement of consistency as our own and approve the petition? So moved. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. And do you, is there any discussion? Yes. Ms. Ashmira. Thank you. Um, this is a down zoning for this land to be acquired by the county. It's 27 acres. And I know oftentimes we talk about the open space. So this 27 acres will be acquired by the county to be used as a park. So I just wanted to highlight that. This is right next to the music, music pavilion adjacent to many, many apartments and single family homes. So this is a, a perfect opportunity to highlight the work that county is doing to address our park and open space. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? Yes, I have a question. Um, um, I'm I, 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 Mr. Winston. Mr. Winston, yes. So, so uh, we're in, we're in this because uh, this doesn't say this is as by the county um, um, that is doing this rezoning. Um, where um, in this petition is it guaranteed that uh, this rezoning will? Um, uh, be uh, uh, used for, for parkland? I guess that's a question for Mr. Uh, Mr. Pettit. I think that this is a question I want to make sure. This is a conventional rezoning, so I want to make sure with the attorney that we can, that is a yeah. question that can be addressed. Uh, you, you're correct, Mayor. We should not be talking specifics. We should be talking any allowable use in the proposed zoning. Uh, Mr. Winston, did you hear Ms. Hagler-Gray? Well, well then, I, then I have a question for Ms. Ashmira of, of how, how does uh, she, uh, um, how, how would she guarantee that, that that's what this... So, um, so petitioner sent an email, so it wasn't something I had asked, petitioner volunteered that information. Okay, and it's, and it's even though they said that, Ms. Ashmira, you know, um, that's a possibility, they, uh, they don't have to... Um, they don't have to develop, as they said in the email, any any allowable use in the R3 district would be allowed. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Winston, uh, did I see Ms. Johnson? Ms. Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you. I, I just, it, it's nice to see down zoning. Yeah. Uh, for, so I'm, I'm <laughs> happy to support <laughs> and for. All right, thank you. So with that, um, is there any further discussion here? No further discussion. Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? No. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ashmira? Yes. All right, the next item on our agenda, item 29 was deferred. I believe that was our last item prior to our um, hearings. What I'd like to do is, and ask is that we take a 20 minute break. Um, the hearings were proposed, to, I'm sorry, put this back on. The hearings were scheduled for six o'clock um, to begin and so we can probably start a little bit early if those if we have some people available so we're going to take a break um, for 20 minutes and so that would get us about 20 of six and then we'll come back in from that break and start with our hearings for those that may be able to is it if they're if everyone agrees that they can um, that the hearings that there everyone is here for the hearings all of the speakers we can start a little bit early miss I, I believe they were noticed for five o'clock mayor they were noticed for five that's correct yes okay oh. well we will it is um after five right <laughs> yeah. yeah it's five thirty <laughs> we can. i'm sorry i thought they were noticed for six do you mind if we take a 10 minute break <laughs> just to give us a moment and we'll be ready to come back at five 30. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>
a no vote is for what is this? This is for this petition. All right, I'm now calling our meeting back to order. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Really appreciate it. Um, we are now in the section of our meeting where we have our hearings. And just as a reminder of the, how the hearings worked, work is that anyone that wishes to speak should have signed up for the clerk. So we have a list of everyone that's going to speak. The staff presents the petition. Those in favor get three minutes to speak unless there's someone that is opposed to it. And then there's 10 minutes. The petitioner gets 10 minutes. The opponent gets 10 minutes. The staff would get 10 minutes if they were opposed to it. And then there's a two, petitioner has a two minute rebuttal. And then the petition will go to the zoning committee of the planning commission. And they have already talked about when their next meeting is, but that's not for participation by the public. This is the hearing and then they make their decision and we come back and recommend um, actions. We are going to work really hard to get through the agenda tonight because it is a holiday and the next meeting is a zoning meeting is until January the 18th. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive in and begin um, with item number 30, petition 2021-096 by Ascent Real Estate Capital for approximately two acres are located along East 36th Street in District 1. The current zoning is single family residential. The proposed zoning is mud mixed use development optional. The staff recommends approval um, upon resolution of outstanding issues with site and building design and transportation. So with that, the staff will um, give their presentation and my speakers list. Here it is. The speakers list on item 30. There are Mr. Brown, will you coordinate the um, four? And then the speakers against are Candace Oliver, followed by Paul Mosher, Mosher and Jacob Hoare. So if you guys would want to come down, we have a, die, a, a podium right here as we go through it. So now, um, Mr. Petton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. First petition this evening, 2021-096. As mentioned, it's approximately 1.89 acres on East 36th Street, located between the uh, side streets of North Alexander and McDowell in the NODA community. Uh, the existing zoning is R5 residential. The proposed zoning is for mud, uh, mixed-use development with optional provisions. Uh, the adopted future land use from the 36th Street Station Area Plan recommends both institutional uses, that's the area that you can see in blue, and single family residential uses up to five DUA for the site, that's the uh, green portion that's on the back side on McDowell Street. Uh, the proposal with this petition is for 211 multifamily units, uh, up to 11,100 square foot of retail, EDE, personal service, or other non-residential uses that would be permitted in the MUD district. Uh, does prohibit things like car washes, auto service stations, accessory drive through windows, warehousing, and self-storage. Uh, we do have a max building height of 65 feet. There are some different uh, nuances to that that you can see in the site plan, uh, but the max height uh, would be for 65 feet. It does propose 0.18 acres of improved open space. Uh, that would be the property mainly on North McDowell Street where you can see tree save and replanting, as well as some open space within the middle of the building. Uh, optional provisions requested uh, would allow for mechanical and utility equipment to encroach within the setback, so long as they don't block the required sidewalk and street frontages. Uh, allow a minimum of 213 on-site vehicular parking spaces with the ability to provide up to 223 spaces. Also commits to things like transportation improvements for uh, including two curb ramps, an ADA compliant bus pad, uh, as well as streetscape improvements, which would include an eight foot planning strip and six foot sidewalk, as well as the installation of flashing beacons for crosswalks. Uh, we do propose, or excuse me, the petition does propose architectural details, including preferred building materials, building facade modulations, elevation design features, height reductions at building corners, et cetera, and also commits to active ground floor uses, uh, and then also commits to using best practices to preserve the large tree along East 36th Street. You can see that in that site plan. It says tree save, replanting, and open space. The large circle is that tree that's uh, planned for preservation. Staff does recommend approval of this petition. We do have some outstanding issues related to site building design as well as transportation to work through. Uh, it is inconsistent with this 36th Street Station Area Plan recommendation for institutional uses as well as residential uses up to five DUA. Uh, but again, staff does recommend approval of this petition based on the issues and our rationale. And we'll be happy to take any questions following the petitioner's presentation as well as presentation from the community. Thank you. Mr. Brown, you have 10 minutes. 
Good evening. Council Member Elgleson, Council Members. Uh, my name is Colin Brown on behalf of the uh, petitioner. If I get it, I might have to be telling you next slide a lot. Thank you. Uh, so again, Colin Brown on behalf of the petitioner. Um, Cassie Yeager from Ascent is with me. We also have David uh, Furman with Centro on. Uh, this is a rezoning we've been out for a while now. Uh, we made contact uh, with the uh, Neighborhood Association early in the year, so there have been a lot of discussions about this. Uh, you have probably heard about it, but just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. Next slide. Property location. Next slide. Uh, so here we are. You can see the 36th Street Station. We're approximately a quarter of a mile from 36th Street. Uh, here is Maine and Maine of Noda. So we have a really, I think, unique opportunity with a large rectangular flat parcel of land to do some very positive transit-oriented development in walking distance to the one of the most active commercial districts in the city and walking distance to our transit resources. Next slide. Uh, this is an area, it's one and a half acres, which is very unique for an infill site, uh, very flat, rectangular. As you can see, we've got some uh, medium density uh, multifamily housing next to us. We do share backyards with some single family homes. So you're going to hear some, from some folks tonight, I'm sure, uh, and we are literally in their backyards. So we understand there's going to be an ongoing conversation. Uh, you may, I am sure you're going to hear some frustration uh, from these neighboring property owners because we have been talking for months and months and, uh, and we are still in front of you talking about a medium density, uh, 65 foot tall building. And so I think that's really the main point of discussion for you all tonight is, is what do we see here? Uh, we think this is the right location for this type of housing uh, with the investment that we've made in light rail. Um, we think we've got to provide the density for it. Uh, the neighbors are certainly going to tell you they do not want Noda to become South End. We do not disagree with that. Uh, South End, I think you know, is going to 20 and 30 stories. The building that you'll see tonight uh, is five stories uh, up on 36th Street, so not, not kind of breaking the bank there on height, but we think a middle density project, which is what we've got to support in these transit areas. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is to give you a view so you understand the proximity, and, and we'll talk about it. And, and there may be kind of a struggle for Noda. Is Noda a historical single-family uh, mill village that needs to be maintained, or is it a transit-oriented development um, area? It is, I think, somewhere in between. And so we think we've, we've chosen a nice development plan here. I think we've got a very conscientious development team. Uh, early on in this process, we talked about rezoning this to Todd, a transit oriented development district. A Todd NC is kind of the medium density of that. Uh, we, we moved away from that. Staff recommended we go with a uh, conditional zoning like this so we could have some negotiations, so we could provide some community benefits, commit to high quality architecture, and that's why we're in this. But really, see the proximity here to the station to downtown Noda. We think it's a great location. Next slide. There it is again. Next slide. And I'll turn it over. Uh, if we can advance now, keep going. Next slide. Next slide. I'll turn it over to Cassie Yeager uh, to talk to you a little bit about their history and the development plan. Next slide. Next slide. One more. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Good evening, I'm Cassie Yeager from Ascent, and I will be sharing our proposal for an important site in Noda Center. We are a local team and care deeply about creating great places with high quality design. Noda is a special place, and through our ownership of the neighborhood theater, we have come to appreciate Noda's distinct character, energy, and vibe. We understand that Noda is unique, and we want to enhance that and thoroughly plan for its growth. We know how deeply the residents and business owners care about this neighborhood. We have witnessed it through the past year of our neighborhood engagement. On this site, we proposed a mixed-use development with up to 211 apartments wrapping a, par a four-story parking deck. The development will feature nearly 11,000 square feet of retail with numerous community benefits. We'd like to take a moment to discuss the key reasons why we believe this site should be rezoned. First, Charlotte is experiencing a housing crisis. This project will create much needed housing. Everybody knows, <laughs> knows that already, nothing, nothing new. Because our team works in affordable housing, we understand how deeply this growing city needs more affordable housing and market rate housing. According to the State of Housing in Charlotte report, we are underbuilding by thousands of multifamily units each year. With over 100 people moving here each day, this project creates 
micro units and provides additional housing choice and opportunity. Second, this site's proximity to the light rail. This is a transit-oriented site, a short walk from the station. We believe that transit-oriented development is an essential piece of our growth puzzle. Third is our ground floor retail. We need more opportunities for our small business owners and walkable neighborhood services. These retail spaces will help local entrepreneurs by providing low cost and affordable opportunities for them to start their businesses. Lastly, we've in included numerous community benefits such as open space, streetscape, safety improvements, and public art. Although we recognize that while this project is close to a light rail stop, it also abuts single family homes and we have to be sensitive to that. We've looked to the guidance of the Todd NC policy for appropriate height near single family to balance this condition. Now I'd like to turn it over to my colleague David Furman, an experienced urban designer, architect, and local artist to explain how our design has evolved based on neighborhood feedback and also keeping the growth of, of Charlotte in mind. The goal here is to be able to create a great neighborhood that's also sensitive to the transition to the, uh, the rear single family homes. So with that, I'll hand it over to, virtually hand it over to David Furman. Good evening, everybody. Uh, would you back up the slides back to the site plan? Um, One more. Yeah, when our Centro company started partnering with Ascent to do these projects, we wanted to differentiate ourselves from sort of the mainstream apartment world. And the main ways we were doing that, as, as uh, Cassie touched on, are through these small units which drive uh, the cost down and make these special neighborhoods more accessible to more people. And through the micro retail, uh, the main thing we want to do is animate the streets. It drives me nuts when I ride by a, a walk by an apartment project and there's you know, a private fitness center on the street where something really nice it could be in addition to the community what it is. So that's the, the main part of the, of the idea behind the project is to keep small retailers in the community. Uh, go back to the site plan, one before this. So planning wise, it's driven by the large tree. When you come to this site, we thought, not only is that large tree a unique opportunity to create a public courtyard, a public plaza that could, with the wider sidewalks that could spill into it and all this micro retail in there with small glass garage doors that open up and, and really create street vendors. But it also, uh, opens up the back courtyard. The way that this project would be developed by most mainstream developers is it would be a donut and it would be a block long uh, facade along 36 and a block long facade along the back. But by pushing the, pushing the piece back to make the courtyard front, we also make a back courtyard. And that I think will divide the building into two buildings. And as you walk down the street, it will not feel so monolithic, it'll feel more like two buildings. Um, the garage is buried in the site and it's not visible from any of the streets and will be screened on the back where it is open to the single family. And the leftover lot back there where you see the park is a leftover single family lot that came with this site. And our plan is to make that a public space. So that is also a little micro park that is, that is totally open to the community and part of the public realm. Go to the next slide, please. Uh, the architecture, uh, the idea is to take the sidewalks in the front and push them, push the lower level back, push the retail back so that the streetscape is even wider. Uh, and that gives the opportunity to pull the floors above that out and to sculpt those floors so that they're, they don't appear just like a, a big wall crashing down on the house minimum sidewalk width. Uh, we're also trying to articulate the design at four stories so that the fifth story is, subordinates that and pushes back some so that from the streetscape it, it lowers the scale of the building rather than trying to accent uh, the, the height. Um, on the side elevation, uh, we also on this elevation we're going to incorporate things we're doing on our other projects is incorporating some public art into the architecture. Uh, we work with public artists that sort of blur the line between the architecture and the art on some components that we'll put in that courtyard. As you go down the side street, hit me with the next slide. Um, 
we don't think this is a, a street for retail. We think this should be residential in flavor. It should feel like residential. And as you go down the side streets, the idea is for it to feel like a townhouse, row house development with single family, uh, with the, the, the one store entrances, the three okay, story. The time, the, the miss, I am so sorry. The time is up. The 10 minutes is up. Did you have, is this the time so for the, the opposition speakers? The opposition. So the opposition speakers, Ms. Ol Candace Oliver, Paul Mosher, Mosher, or, and Jacob Hoare, if you would come down. You have 10 minutes to speak before. So test. I can do, I can remind you when like three minutes is up or five, just to make sure everybody gets a chance or, you know, if y'all have coordinated it, I will, if you've coordinated already, I'll stay out of your way. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Council Members. My name is Candace Oliver, and I live at 3318 North McDowell Street. I'm a 14-year resident of the NOTA neighborhood. I'm here today representing NOTA and the over 300 signed petitioners in opposition to the rezoning petition 096. As we open the conversation about the development of the church parcel, we want to be clear, we are not against the development and progression of our neighborhood. It's quite the opposite. We are proud residents of NOTA where we encourage people to join in on our love of the community and support our desire to see the future of NOTA be grounded in smart development. For those that have visited with our neighborhood, Mayor Pro Tem, Councilman Graham, and, F and Councilman Phipps, uh, thank you for allowing us to share our, in person with, this, with you the significance of the proposed development would mean for the neighborhood and the immediate neighbors bordering the property. Next page. I would first, next page. I would first, uh, for those of you, <clears throat> I would first, for those who, have, who haven't had a chance to walk the block with our neighbors, like to ground you, provide reference to what our neighbors see and experience day to day. The church property sits on 36th Street, a two lane, one lane each way cut through street that connects North Tryon to the plaza. It's a 25 mile per hour road. It's not South Boulevard. It's not North Tryon. It is a connector that allows residents from hundreds of old mill homes, some with historic designation, an artery to get to and from major streets. Next page. In the petition under review, a Senate is proposing that their five story, 65 foot, 211 unit apartment be built on the site of the Johnston Memorial Presbyterian Church, a church that is a few years shy of celebrating 100 years. To extend your understanding of the church's significance, we have provided an article on the roots of the church and its history to the original Noda Mill Village. And listen, today is not about standing in a corner and digging our heels in. Our neighbors have remained active and engaged, working tirelessly to a, for a solution to drive smart development that continues to build the community. We spent almost 10 months in conversations with the development group on developer changes that have quite honestly skirted the boundaries of acceptable and unacceptable, with the developer doing the bare minimum in requested changes. We have never seen this level of disregard for working through solutions and honoring a collaborative approach to neighborhood partnership. We've asked for affordability. It's not lost to us that the original Mill Village was built on the backs of the working class in North Charlotte. The developers' feedback for this process has been bluntly, quote, this is a numbers game. In order to make this work for us, it must be designed this way. Our perspective is quite different. There should be an opportunity to approach our needs as a city with a site that will make all of us proud. 10, 20, 30, 100 years from now. Next page. The mass and density are unlike any other recently constructed and or proposed development that has built, been built in our neighborhood directly bordering residential housing. We would also add that the proposed bill will be significant as there are no other design projects with the mass and scale in Charlotte developed this close in proximity to historic mill homes. NOTA is not South End. South End is an industrial area with much larger development footprints. NOTA is an existing neighborhood with hundreds of homes that are tiny in comparison. We're looking for development that is driven from thoughtfulness and design for our neighborhood. Understanding that the proposed site and land is highly desirable, we maintain that the negatives outweigh the positives. Next page. We saw collaboration with the developer to provide meaningful design. We've asked for an opportunity for adaptive reuse of the Johnson Church. 
where there would be meaningful intention added to the NOTA landscape. We've seen this type of repurposing and adaptation in churches like the church on Parkwood, in the Congregate, and the converted Dilworth Methodist Church that most recently housed the Bonterra restaurant. These considerations were all met with a no. As a neighborhood collective, we asked the council to look to implement new visions for the city, but also work to keep an assemblance of neighborhood roots. I will say this, there are times when we, meet, we need to take it slow, move with complete alignment. This is one of those times. There are thousands of developments and developers and architects, but the land that allows a vision to become reality should be sacred and honored and developed with complete care. Again, we are not saying not here, we are saying not this. This development is not right for this site. Respectfully, we ask that you vote no to rezoning petition 096. I'll turn it over to my neighbor, Paul Moser. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and City Council, my name is Paul Moser. I am an architect and two-year resident of NOTA. My house, which is on the same block as this project, is a 115-year member of NOTA. The proposed project does not take into account the intentions of the 2040 Comprehensive Plan. This list is taken directly from City Planning's review of this project. Goal two, about offering a diversity of housing options in neighborhoods by increasing the, presidents, or the presence of middle density housing, such as fourplexes and townhomes, has been incorrectly marked by City Planning. This is absolutely not middle density housing. Goal six, labeled NA, should be marked as out of alignment because the project does not expand the existing canopy beyond code minimum and it does not encourage walking or cycling. Goal seven, labeled NA, should be marked out of alignment because the project still does not address the existing heritage trees on adjacent city property that will be destroyed by this project. And goal nine, the goal about maintaining existing identity and charm, is correctly marked as out of alignment. Identity and charm are NOTA's biggest assets. Next slide. We want to stress that we live in a neighborhood, not in an urban center. Here's a picture of the block where this project is proposed. As previously mentioned, many are historically protected houses. Next slide. Here is our main street, North Davidson. It is mainly one and two story buildings and some renovated single family mill homes. It is important to truly understand the scale of this proposed building. Next slide. Here we can see an example of a five story apartment building under construction. This project is being built at the entrance to Noda next to Matheson Avenue. Next slide. Counting the CMU blocks that make up the stairs shows us that this building is only 58 feet tall, or about 10% less in height than the proposed project. Next slide. The developer's proposal has been cleverly drawn with missing information regarding the height of the building. You can see in the elevations on the left that the correct five-story height has not been drawn, leading you to believe that the building height and massing change. But if you look at the site plan on the right, you can see that the light red five-story zone extends across most of the rear of the building and that the four-story parking deck is incorrectly labeled as three stories. Also note that a four-level garage is not a real reduction because you can park on the roof of a garage. In all their renderings and realistic drawings, this proposal intentionally and cleverly removes any existing context. Here's a sketch of the proposed development next to one of the existing houses in the neighborhood. Next slide. As you can see, and in alignment with their site plan, the building steps down on the corner, but the massing of a 65-foot, five-story building remains. The development team and their attorney have told us many times that the 2040 plan tells us, says whatever you want it to say, and you can see that they believe that. They're telling you that the new 2040 plan intends to allow development at any scale, in any location near transit, as long as they have enough land to build on, existing neighborhood or not. But common sense tells us that the TOD clauses were not written with the intention of allowing comically large buildings to be built in the middle of existing neighborhoods. Next slide. The 2040 plan and its clauses for increased density were written to allow things like neighborhood scale apartments, townhomes, and fourplexes that blend with their context. Here's an excellent example on 35th Street of apartments built to step down in height and mass to the scale and rhythm of the neighborhood. This is the intent of the 2040 plan for our neighborhood. Next slide. NOTA is entering the call for density and housing diversity unlike any other neighborhood with approvals of large numbers of townhomes that sextuple the existing density and with neighborhood scale apartments which can increase density 15 times or more. NOTA even has large apartment build apartments being built near the light rail stop and we're happy to have them. Next slide. Over 500 apartments are under construction in NOTA, not to mention those already existing or already planned and approved. We like these new projects, but they are not in the middle of our existing neighborhood and they respect our existing community. Next slide. My neighbors and I are exhausted after being laughed at by developers in community feedback meetings when we try to offer suggestions. We long for zoning and city playing and character overlays that work for us to protect us from out of scale development. 
Please set a precedent that protects existing neighborhoods and stops the erosion of communities at the whim of developers. Please vote no for this rezoning and vote in favor of smart density that doesn't overshadow and destroy our existing we have neighborhoods. have one minute left. Good evening. My name is Jacob Harm. I'm representing the Noda Neighborhood and Business Association. As mentioned over the past year, the board, our association of neighbors, have engaged with the petitioner on the plan. Despite this effort, many concerns regarding the plan remain which are outlined in a letter we submitted to council and planning staff a couple of weeks ago. Over 75% of our association is against this plan. And, um, and, we, and, that, and, and we recognize that increased density can, can, uh, will continue to happen in our neighborhood as well as the advantages that it can bring to NOTA and the city. Additionally, the NOTA board and neighbors have been deeply involved in the 2040 comprehensive plan and UDO to help chart out how NOTA and Charlotte will continue to grow. As such, we've supported increased density in numerous rezoning petitions throughout the neighborhood, including on 36th Street. That said, this proposed development is out of scale when compared to the neighboring developments and given its proximity to single family historic mill homes directly abutting the property. Uh, looks like I'm out of time. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. All right, we'll hear from the petitioner. Thank you. Um, you have two minutes, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Madam Mayor Colin Brown again. Um, I, I would say we love NOTA too. Uh, it is a very special part of the city uh, and lots of people want to be in this area where it is walkable to transit, where it's walkable to everything phenomenal that everyone has done in downtown NOTA. Uh, I did say at a meeting earlier this year, uh, you know, development is, is a math problem and there's truth to that. And I try to be honest uh, with neighbors and you all about it about the cost of development. And so the question I think for council, and I did say, you know, I did joke about the 2040 plan saying, you know, what we want it to say, but the question is, what does the 2040 plan say? What, what do y'all think it says about this area? We think it is supportive of uh, appropriate density. We'd call this medium density. Uh, and we think, you know, the alternative, if this, if we do not uh, approve a rezoning that allows sufficient density to have some micro uh, units to have affordable housing, uh, more relatively affordable housing here. The option then, as, and we've talked to the neighborhood about, is what will this site become? Uh, I, I don't think it will become uh, single family housing. I think if uh, we say, well, what we really want here is kind of a step down in density. We'd like to see townhomes. We know what that looks in NOTA now. I mean, we're talking about million dollar homes, which I really think is the antithesis of, of the spirit of NOTA. So I know it's challenging. Uh, we will continue working with the neighbors um, as we have. Just the question is, what does this site become? Uh, we believe it becomes the type, uh, we, need, we believe it needs enough density to fit in NOTA. And if we can kind of get on the same page with, okay, this will have density, we are happy to continue working with neighbors on design and other community benefits that will be provided. And just to add to that, if we can go back to the slide before this that shows the, the neighborhood retail. When I think of the entrepreneurs at the Winifred at Central Rail Yard South End and the success and courage that they have displayed in opening their businesses during the pandemic, it is just absolutely what NOTA needs to have more small businesses. Time is up. Thank you very Thank much. You. So I'm going to recognize the council members and I really appreciate it. I love the, having you back in the chamber with the signs and to be in person to have this dialogue is great. So I just ask that you be respectful of the council members. There will be questions and comments and, and allow everyone the time to at, address the questions that they have or comment among themselves. And the first person I'd like to recognize is council member Eggleston followed by Mayor Pro Tem Eiselt. So Thank you, Mayor. I'll start just with an attempt to hopefully frame the conversation for my colleagues to some degree. I think at the meeting that I attended with many of you that are here tonight and the petitioners on site a couple of months ago, I do think that there is general agreement that this is not, in the, the future for this site is not R5. I know that there is a desire from some in, in the community um, I believe it was stated that they would prefer to see that this be townhomes um, or something to that effect, something of that scale and density. In any case, I, I don't think it's going to be R5. So we're discussing really what's the future. And I think if there is another petitioner out there, and I'm, I'm not aware of one, but 
that would say we would love to, we'd like to come in and we'd like to adaptively reuse the church, there's still a portion of this site that would be increased greatly in density. And so I think the conversation to have tonight, I, I believe, is what is the appropriate level of density, what is the appropriate height, because it does about a single family neighborhood. We do have to be sensitive to that. Um, it is not, as it was pointed out, South Boulevard and, or Tryon Street, but it is also not 37th or 35th Street. 36th Street is um, a street where I believe the density is, is more appropriate than on 37th or 35th, for instance. Um, it is relatively close to a, a, a well-used transit station that we've invested a lot of money in and will not be successful if there's not density along that line. But all of those things, I think there's there's a middle ground on. And so I do believe density is appropriate to a degree. I do believe additional height is appropriate to a degree. And I think it's a matter of figuring out what that is. Um, I appreciated the slide with all of the adaptive reuse projects because uh, those of us around the dais voted on all those. and so. I don't think there's any doubt about the support for adaptive reuse. I would note that the congregate project had a bunch of folks in, here in opposition to it. So there's nothing in NODA that's ever been uh, universally agreed upon for it or against it. That's the nature of NODA. Um, and I think NODA's diversity in opinion and in the people and in the businesses is, is its strength. I do appreciate that this has been mindful about creating open space in the courtyard. I do appreciate that it's mindful about local business, which I think is one of the most amazing parts of NODA is the, the tapestry of local businesses. Um, I do appreciate, frankly, that they brought on someone as talented as the architect they brought on so that this doesn't look like every other apartment complex that we see and feel like is just stamped out um, with a cookie cutter. All that said, I think there is a, a reasonable discussion to be had about height, about unit count, um, but I do think that we have to start by acknowledging these are not going to be split up into a handful of single family lots. In this case, it would allow for nine single family lots. That's not what, that's not what is going to happen on this lot. And frankly, it's not what I want to happen on this lot because to the point that was made by the petitioner, they'd likely be million dollar homes. And I think we've got plenty of those in my neighborhood of Plaza Midwood, in Noda. And in every part of the city, we've got to have a diversity in types of housing. We've got to have a diversity in price point of housing. I do think this can potentially provide that. Um, so I hope we can just figure out where we, as, as a council and we as a community, feel like that sweet spot is on the density and the height for this. All right. Thank you, Mr. Eggleston. Our next speaker is Mayor Pro Tem Iselt. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, Colin and um, all of the all of those that were speaking both for and against this proposal. I have been out there. I, I walked the site with neighbors. I don't completely agree with everything that they are concerned about. I think that there's things to like about this project. I like the parking accommodation uh, specifically because it does abut to a single family neighborhood that already has been put under strain for parking on, you know, some pretty small streets back there. Um, I like that it's within walking distance of the light rail as well. I know that if David Furman is involved, then it's gonna be a good looking design and a very thoughtful design. I like that it's the micro units uh, and, and the public park space, but I still struggle with the scale. I think that, you know, we, we talked about this earlier in a meeting we had today with regards to the UDO, with regards to the mapping plan that it's fine to take a look at place types and, and development in terms of what we need, but we have to pay a lot more attention to transition. And when you are changing the character of a parcel like you are here, and we would be in throughout the city, we've got to pay a lot more attention to how that speaks to what is already there or or what it abuts to in terms of different place types. This is to me very inconsistent with the mill houses in the neighborhood there. Um, and I don't know that it has a good transition, frankly. This is taking up the entire block. It still is one roof line, even though with the courtyards, it appears to be more broken up, but that's a lot of impervious space. 
Um, I would like the, the petitioner to speak to the water retention because we spoke about that before and you all talked about the, I guess the underground water retention that would take place. But I'd like to know, is that just what's required of you? Or is that above and beyond? Because I think, I think one of the really important things with stormwater is that we already have problems now because of oversight, frankly, on our, on our part with rezonings in the past. And we don't pay attention to what that does, the impact it has on existing buildings and residents around um, the new infill development. And I think there's an opportunity when we have new development to help out the rest of the neighborhood, right? If you're gonna have to build water retention, are we talking to engineers to see how perhaps a little bit more can be spent to also help out the water problems that are existing there right now? And so if, if the petitioner could address whether or not the water retention solutions that you shared with me go above and beyond what's required or just what's required. Yeah, and I think we have seen some situations where the ordinance uh, does not require detention on site in some redevelopment areas. Uh, development teams can buy out. That is not the case on this site, and I think Nate Doolittle or one of the members of Land Design is on to respond to the technical question. Nate, are you there? Yeah, this is uh, Nate Doolittle with Land Design. So, yes, the ordinance does require us to meet the pre-developed rates at a minimum, right, and to not make anything worse than what's occurring today. What it does above and beyond is we're providing water quality and channel protection, which is the city's biggest concern with downstream erosion of our of our smaller channels. So yes, we are meeting ordinance requirements, but our ordinance improves uh, the condition of what's there today. It also reduces all of the sheet flow that occurs into neighboring properties and onto streets. Everything will be collected and direct piped into the city system. Um, so there's definite benefits above what, what is occurring today. <clears throat> Mayor Pro Tem, yeah. do you have a yeah, follow up? I, I guess, yeah, definite benefits, but does it go beyond what's simply required? Because I honestly don't think our ordinance is strong enough. And as we know, we don't, we're very limited in the state continues to try to take away the power of municipalities to manage our stormwater problems. Um, and so it, it, there's a big difference between just what's required by ordinance and us feeling like it's really addressing the problem. Sure. So, yeah, and, um, and happy to discuss further offline. This site drains directly into street systems, which are then piped for thousands of feet till it hits a stream. So the issues downstream are probably more in restrictions in the city's undersized infrastructure right adjacent to the site from what I've reviewed than, than um, some of the larger watershed issues you're speaking of. But ha happy to discuss if there's other alternatives we can address um, with this project. Okay, and, and with that, I'll just say, I'm still not comfortable with the scale of this project, but I appreciate the presentation. All right, Mr. Winston. Uh, thank you. Um, you know, I, I moved over to the No Die area uh, back in 2005, uh, around 2005, um, and I, I'll say the, the the biggest hurdle to affordability uh, has been the McMansion uh, effect of those those mill homes that um, once that ex still do exist, but once existed in a different form. I will also suggest that uh, the historic creation of the Johnston Mill Village is one of extreme density, a, a, a village. Um, uh, within within a city, um, you know, uh, and I think we have to reckon with the fact that Noda, uh, by nature, um, is in fact a transit-oriented um, community. Uh, when we were first doing uh, uh, that station area plan, my biggest uh, concern uh, was those radius radii uh, did did not extend uh, far enough for the true nature um, of of the community. Um, you know. Uh, uh, you know, it, it is tough uh, when, you know, you move into a neighborhood that has gone through uh, a, a, a several cycles of gentrification. Um, it's hard to tell um, where you exist in time and space. Um, I, I think my biggest concern um, with this development is that I, in fact, think it has too much parking on site. Um, but again, I think 
uh, we really have to uh, 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 wrestle with the fact that neighborhoods like Noda in particular um, are in fact um, transit oriented um, and, uh, and and we have to go ahead and make those um, policy changes that, um, uh, that get it there. So thank you very much. All right, um, Mr. Driggs. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I can understand that seeing this picture comes as a shock to people in Noda. Uh, and I think this is something that we needed to anticipate, frankly, with the 2040 plan process. It was one of the reasons that I expressed concerns about it in our eagerness to create density. We run the risk of just trampling on uh, you know, some of our historic neighborhoods and uh, so I, I think I agree with a lot of what's been said. We're going to have to figure out what our 2040 plan means, uh, recognizing that the UDO is not effective yet. So in fact, we are looking at this more through the lens of our existing ordinances than the new ones, which uh, are months away still. Uh, I was curious about the church. Uh, the church, I guess, is historic, but does not have any designation as a historic uh, landmark. Is that right? That's correct. Um, so uh, any any move to kind of repurpose that building would have to come from whomever uh, would, would have to be, would not be on us. We couldn't kind of cause that to happen, we might encourage it if we saw it, but there would, somebody would have to step up and, <clears throat> and offer us a proposal to kind of repurpose that building. But uh, I think this is just the first of many conversations we're going to have about uh, uh, the impact of some of the goals of the 2040 plan on the character of our city. Uh, one thing I did wonder is, is, is this neighborhood such, and I'm afraid I've only been there a couple of times in the past, but. Uh, is the neighborhood such that if we had a neighborhood character overlay, it would qualify for it? And I don't know who can answer that. Uh, Mr. Petten? I believe the staff is going to step up. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure okay. if we can provide a good answer. Probably in a follow-up report, I'd have to get a little bit more familiar with what the, what the outcome of the question would, would relate to. Because I, I do think this is an example of where we uh, we do run the risk of kind of steamrolling uh, some of the, uh, the the places that identify Charlotte, and there will be a need for higher density and development. But um, this is a, an interesting test case in terms of what we really mean by that. And I, I share a concern about the sheer mass of this building in the context of its environment. Thanks. All right. Um, our next big council question is from Mr. Phipps. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Colin, for your presentation and all of the speakers that have come here. I had an opportunity to uh, make an on-site visit uh, to the site and walk around the blocks and see the various uh, mill homes and stuff. And I shared the concerns of some of my constituents, I mean, some of my colleagues, that the uh, I'm concerned that the structure that I can see, that I see, it doesn't appear to be uh, uh, consistent or compatible with the scope and scale of uh, adjacent multifamily projects around it. That's my primary concern. And I also agree with one of the speakers. I think uh, uh, one of the speakers talked about that uh, that we have, uh, that Charlotte has definitely is in a, in a, a housing crisis, and I agree with that. And these, uh, I guess you got you got 211 micro units. What's the size of these uh, units that we're talking about, square feet wide? David, are you on to answer the square footage of the units? Yeah, I am. Um, well, I don't know what the average is. The yeah. smallest units are probably about 400 square feet, 420 square feet. That's pretty, that's so. Is this the first entry of, of this type of product in the Noda area? That seems to be a pretty small. It reminds me of some of those uh, exhibits they have at IKEA, where they have uh, they have demonstrations of how small 
some yeah. units can be. Is that like what we're talking about with these? So the average unit overall is 580 square feet. The units David from in reference were the the smallest units in the project. But the the wonderful thing about those smaller units is that it provides greater affordability for someone who maybe just moved to Charlotte or recently completed school or, or really anybody that doesn't need a lot of square footage. And so by expanding the range of housing opportunities, you've expanded your, your housing choice and have enabled residents to make more have more flexibility with their, their budget. So it's just reducing the, the rent relative to the, the standard one bedroom in the area, if that makes sense. Most of those units at Ikea are pretty cool. <laughs> I think so, yes. But look, so so then are you equating then the small square, uh, square feet of these units that that's going to contribute to the affordability? Because I noticed when we had the, uh, I guess, the diagram of the 2040 plan, uh, can you put that up, the 2040 plan, how this compares? I noticed that uh, goal number three seems to be, that had an X there, and I was trying to reconcile how do you you balance the fact that uh, you, you, you're having a product that has uh, a diversity of, of housing options, but it looks to me that overall access to these options are kind of limited. Could you, could you comment on that? I think the X that you're referring to was in the uh, opposition presentation where they okay. were showing staff's evaluation, and, and I believe they were inferring that this was not enhancing affordability. We would disagree with that. I'm talking about the the, the, uh, the the exhibit we had that compares this with the objectives of the 2040 plan. Can we put that up? We're yeah, we're we're working on getting that pulled okay. up. But Councilmember Phipps, you are correct. Is for it, goal number three, it's planning it's staff in, did it's determine that it two. it didn't meet. I'm talking about. I'm yeah, not. it it did not meet the housing access for all. That right. goal is really to uh, have a commitment to affordable housing, either through the preservation of naturally occurring affordable and workforce housing, or committing to that through new construction. So, you know, that's the petitions that we see that have a, a 10 percent or 100 percent. Uh, you know, the units would be reserved for a certain AMI. That's where that goal comes into play. And that, since this petition doesn't have that commitment, we determined that it didn't meet that goal. Okay. Okay. But I guess the petitioner is saying then that because of the smallness of the units, that, that that is a proxy for more affordability that these units will provide. That's right. Even though at this point we have not committed to a, a formal commitment, uh, the starting rents, we believe, for these smaller studios will begin um, a little over $1,000 a month, which compares to some of the one bedrooms in, in Noda are 1600 a month. And so that reduced um, that discount to the other uh, units in that area um, are actually affordable to 80 percent uh, AMI. We were able, through this micro unit concept, able to provide uh, 80 percent AMI housing um, without a commitment, but, you know, the, the smaller nature enabled us to provide that in South End, which is where we're seeing um, rents skyrocketing. So it's, it's really some of the most relatively affordable uh, units in South End through our, our Central Railroad project. And that's really what we're trying to, to replicate here is, is create an, a new housing type that opens, widens the, the opportunity set for the residents moving to NODA. So we, we think it actually has a, a lot of affordability um, benefits just through the nature of its, its product type. It's, unique, it's in innovative. Um, the retail units, a lot of those are, are smaller retail units, which, you know, uh, provides a lot of affordability for business owners. Instead of renting out a massive square f uh, foot um, space, instead of having to pay for an expensive foot up, fit out, these retail innovators are able to move right in, have a short-term lease, and begin their, their business activities. So we think that that's something that's very unique and innovative. And, um, you know, I think it's important to kind of look at those those details of, of this plan and uh, we you know we realize this is against single fa family homes but you know we've really paid a lot of attention to studying the the distance between the homes and you know what what else can we add to this uh, this area so I think it's important to acknowledge that my final question uh, and I would address this to uh, uh, city to the staff and maybe, yeah, staff. Um, 
in our, in our materials, it says that a, a traffic impact study was not required ostensibly because it didn't meet the 2,500 uh, uh, trip uh, threshold, but it looks like it's at uh, 2,497. So you're only talking about three trips that would trip that trigger for a TIS study. Are we that confident that uh, it could be that close and, and, it, and this would not require a traffic impact study? I'll, uh, I'll let Brandon with CDOT come up and give you some feedback on that one. Hey, good evening, Brandon Brazil with CDOT. And uh, yes, unfortunately, that is our threshold. So that's kind of what we have to kind of hold hard and fast to whenever we require a traffic study. I will say, though, that the petitioner did agree to do some uh, transportation improvements above and beyond what they were required with the ordinance. So we're getting some uh, signalized pedestrian crossings at 36 in Alexander, as well as 36 in Spencer Street at the recommendation of CDOT staff and what other items that could have been done above and beyond what was required. So. Well, I, I guess you can let the record reflect that I still I have some concerns that we could be that close to the to the uh, traffic impact study trigger <laughs> being three that uh, we would be comfortable enough to not uh, require one for this project. Given the scope and scale of what's proposed on the site, I would think, I mean, I don't know. It seems like to me three is not a, a very good cushion in my mind, but... That's all the questions I have right now. Yeah. And we acknowledge we, we were close to what would typically be the trigger. So in our conversation with CDOT, we certainly don't want to, oh, we're three under, so we're not going to do anything. And I think what we do, you know, a lot of times the TI, the question is, what improvements will you then do? Typically, if you do a TIA, it says improvements need to be done. This is not an area where I think anyone wants to see a massive widening of streets, adding additional lanes or turn lanes. So our conversation with CDOT was, if we were doing a traffic study, what are some of the things you would ask for? And so CDOT kind of laid out and said, well, if you, you know, did a traffic study, here's some of the things that we might ask. And so the petitioner has committed to do those regardless of having not conducted a traffic study. And to add to that, Colin, I think that that traffic study also assumes that no one is riding the light rail. What we would like to see, and we've seen in our other similarly um, similar projects, is that not everybody has cars. And so what we've proposed is to have our deck open to transient parking, um, so it becomes, the deck becomes an amenity for the neighborhood and, and not just a, an empty parking deck. So our, what our hope would be that, you know, our, our residents and, and as the walkability area increases, um, that part of those, those people are, are using transit. But there are only 223 spaces, right? So you got 211 units. So I don't know if that's, I mean, I don't know from a capacity, parking capacity standpoint, is that really sufficient, I, I mean, to, to amenitize the community to be able to use the parking deck? Uh, it's, it's one per uh, unit, one per residential unit, which is, is, is the MUD standard. Um, but we have seen that a lot of these, you know, people, if they're moving from other cities, or that they're attracted to these, these projects because of the light rail, that they're choosing to be in those locations because they want to be able to take their light rail into uptown. And, and so we've, um, we've seen them you know, not 100% of our people ha have cars. So that's, you know, and, and, and hopefully that transit-oriented trend um, continues. And, and, and we're balancing here. You know, the TOD district itself requires no parking. Uh, we thought that would not be something that's popular with the neighborhood. Uh, still, you know, Councilmember Winston has told us you have too much parking. So here we're, we're trying to balance. Like, this is an in-town neighborhood. It's close to Todd. We want to have enough parking, but to not too much parking. It is impossible to make all the people happy all the time, but we're working. All right, um, Ms. Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. I have a concern with this development as well. And I hope that this is a petition that, that our residents really follow. Um, I think Mr. Mosher asked a great question. What does the 2040 plan say about this? And, and this is why those of us who were opposed to the 2040 plan, this is the reason. Um, it's, it's likely foreseeable that neighborhoods are going to change. And, and fortunately, right now, it's coming before council because once neighborhoods 
place type for change, we won't even see this type of, uh, we may not see this type of petition. So um, the reason I voted against the, the former or the, the past petition, 114, was because they, we still have to consider location. And we still have to consider neighborhood cohesiveness and neighborhood compatibility. So I, I would hope that the developer really worked with the community to, uh, to lower the height or lower the density or, or something because um, there is an op there's opposition. Over 300 residents have signed the petition. Um, another thing that should be concerning to us is, as council, and we just talked about this last week, is the lack of a cumulative mess of um, development to, to trigger a traffic study. I'm sure that there's a development within a mile or so that has at least three trips. That if there was some type of cumulative approach, then uh, then there would be a traffic impact study. Because of our policies, our, our neighborhoods and our residents are carrying the burden of all of this growth without without policy. I'd also question a you know a thousand dollars a month for 580 square feet square foot. So you know while that might be less than the uh, the average rent, it's 580 square foot. So it's it's, it's not um, affordable. Um, the deficit, the, the crisis, and the housing deficit is actually in the individuals who are 30 percent AMI or lower. So this doesn't answer a call for affordable housing. And like uh, one of my colleagues say, it's not, I hope we're not dazzled by that term that it's affordable, uh, affordable or affordability. So um, at this point, I, I hope that we can answer what does the 2040 plan say about this? Because uh, to me, this is foreseeable of uh, the change in character uh, in, in neighborhoods um, uh, because we've allowed that in our policy. So it, it's concerning, but again, this is why those of us who were opposed to the 2040 plan were opposed to it because this is the type of change of character um, that's, that, that's very, very, very possible in, in the city. So I hope we can put some parameters and, and, pre and preserve some type of uh, neighborhood character. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mr. Bakari. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just want to add, uh, obviously, it's a complicated rezoning. There's a lot of neighborhood passion behind it. I appreciate all of you for doing that. Uh, for, for everyone viewing and for my colleagues, I'll tell you, if you're searching for a viable solution to affordable housing in today's day and age, this is what that looks like. Um, it, it, it isn't in the form of subsidized 80% or 60% or 30% AMI units of which we can spend all the money we can possibly cobble together and get 1,000 or 1,500 or 2,000 in a couple years. Um, it, it's about higher density, taller, smaller square footage. That's literally the only way that we're going to solve for this. And it's another reason why the 2040 comp plan was so confusing to a lot of us because if it was truly density and affordability we were going after, um, it's not duplexes and triplexes that are going to solve that. It's smaller square footage, more dense and higher units just like this, and it's going to create conflict in every neighborhood. We've known that the whole time. So I, I, this is an interesting one and a unique one, but I will challenge any one of you that um, is a champion for affordable housing uh, to make sure that you look long and hard over this next month at this because this is what material, scalable, volume-based affordable housing looks like in this community going forward, and it brings with it a lot of pain. So I, I, I just I hope that that is not lost on any of us. Thank you. All right. Um, is there anyone else that has not spoken that wishes to speak? I, I do want to say that Mr. Bakari's comments about affordable housing is not just the affordable where we look at 
the low income, it is working. It is providing for people that are coming here with some of the jobs that we're looking at and agree that affordable housing has to have different components for different types of opportunities for people to be able to live here. And while this, re this project represents a number of questions and issues in the community, the idea of 500 square feet or less is an acceptable market consumer choice. And that we have to really understand that not everybody's gonna live in a 1,500, 1,200, 3,000 square foot place and prefer not to, or maybe um, they see it as the lifestyle that they choose. And if the market, the risk is being taken by the developer on that affordability and the, and the clients that purchase the house. So with that, I know that Mr. Eggleston I just gave you a filler to get ready because this is your closing comment on the project. It is. I just want to say, um, before we put a bow on this, there's obviously still work to do to, to find a, a place where we can come together on this. But I do want to underscore for some of my colleagues who live out on the outer edges of the city, in places that are not 10-minute walkable neighborhoods, um, the idea, some some seem flabbergasted by the idea that, that younger people might want to live in five or 600 square foot apartments or that they might live without a car or that two, you know, married couple might have one car that they share. Um, that is happening. <laughs> so it's not as strange as it might seem if you live in a neighborhood where that wouldn't possibly work uh, because it happens in my neighborhood of Plaza Midwood. I have a married couple who could very well afford to have multiple cars if they wanted. They don't and they use transit, and they walk everywhere, and we're not even as well served by transit as Nodi is. So if it seems foreign to you, I can appreciate that in certain parts of town it would not make any sense, and it's probably not happening. I can assure you that near town it is happening. Uh, I have friends and I have neighbors who are living that lifestyle, and there are more people moving to this city. The types of people that are moving to this city are looking for that sort of lifestyle. So when we, we don't think there's enough parking, there might well be. When we don't think people want to live in five and 600 square foot apartments, Many people do. You might not want to, but it doesn't mean it's not happening. It doesn't mean there's not a market for it. If there weren't a market for it, they wouldn't be building it. So if we're going to talk about 10-minute neighborhoods, we have to change the way that we think about how people want to live. And a lot of those people are long, younger than any of us on this council, a lot younger than some of us on this council. So what you talk about? <laughs> I, I hope that there will be some, some serious consideration given to the fact that maybe not everyone in this city lives the way that everyone else in this city does. Um, and that's changing and it's shifting. And, and I think this speaks to that to, to a great degree. But again, I think we've got some, some more ground to cover uh, before we will be able to move forward on this one. But with that, motion to close. Well, um, I have Mayor Pro Tem who'd like to speak again. Mayor Pro Tem? I'll second the motion. <laughs> I, I, under, yeah. I heard you, Mr. Driggs, but before. I'll be, I'll be really brief. We've just got to look at how these different place types coordinate with each other transition. And that is not something that we did discuss when we passed the 2040 plan, certainly not enough. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. Not against the project, I am against the scale versus a mill house right next door. And, it, and we've gotta get that transition right. Thank you. Thank you. Motion so we have close. a motion to close on a second. Um, I am so sorry, but one of the requirements of having electronic meetings and people on in the meeting virtually is that we have to use um, roll call voting. So the motion to close, and you need to be on camera to vote in this situation. So with that, I'm going to have a roll call vote. All right, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? He's not on camera. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ashmira? I have seven for closing the motion passes. All right, so the next item on our agenda is petition. Thank you for being here. Um, 
The next item on our agenda is item 31, rezoning petition 2021-127 by flagship healthcare properties are locating approximately 5.2 acres on Steel Creek Road between Huntington Meadow and Settlers Trail. It's in District 3. The current zoning is single family residential. The proposed zoning is office conditional. The staff recommends approval to, of this petition at, with a resolution of technical revisions on land use and transportation. In this case, the staff, we do have opposition on this um, petition. And so the staff will make their presentation and will be followed by um, Mr. McVeigh, will you organize and all of that? And then yes, we have Wayne Ming against it. Mr. Ming, are, and you are virtual. So we will come to you after the um, staff and the pro petitioner's presentation. So, Mr. Petten. All right, thank you, Madam Mayor. 2021-127, uh, it's approximately 5.2 acres on Steel Creek Road. Uh, it is currently zoned R3, and the proposed zoning is for Office 1 uh, conditional. The adopted future land use from the Steel Creek Area Plan, which was adopted in 2012, recommends residential uses up to four dwelling units an acre for the site. Uh, the proposal for this petition is to allow for the development of up to 36,000 square feet of medical and general office uses and clinics, uh, does limit building height to 50 feet, commits to dedicating and conveying an easement of the 50 foot and 100 foot swim buffers associated with Walker Branch and Walker Branch Tributary to Mecklenburg County for use as a greenway, also commits to the following transportation improvements which include dedication of right of way of 60 feet from the center line of Steel Creek Road. Construction of a southbound left turn lane with 150 feet of storage. Construction of an 8-foot planting strip and 12-foot multi-use path along the site's Steel Creek Road frontage. Uh, and also confirms to adherence of preferred architectural materials, uh, including transparent glass, uh, minimum masonry material use, and blank wall provisions. Uh, also limitates, or excuse, limitates, limits maximum building height of freestanding lighting fixtures uh, to 26 feet and requires that they be capped and downwardly directed. Uh, staff does recommend approval of this petition. Uh, we do have some res uh, outstanding issues that need to be resolved and technical revisions that need to be resolved, mainly related to land use and transportation. Uh, and again, it's inconsistent with that uh, residential recommendation, but given some of those existing uses uh, nearby, uh, just adjacent uh, in that general area of institutional office, there's a school and then some more retail and commercial uses just south on Steel Creek Road. Staff felt it was an appropriate use. Uh, we'll be happy to take any questions following presentations by the petitioner and the uh, uh, opposition. Thank you. All right, Mr. McVeigh. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor uh, good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of council, members of the zoning community. Keith McVeigh with Moore Van Allen, uh, where our firm is assisting flagship healthcare properties with this petition. With me tonight here in the chamber is Storm Bassich with flagship, and then virtually is Dev Gregg. Also virtually is Jason Dolan, the engineer for the site. We want to thank Dave for his help and his support for this petition. We will be submitting a revised plan to the to the staff later this week to address those remaining minor issues that Dave mentioned. Uh, just a little bit about flagship. Next slide, please. Flagship Healthcare Properties is a local uh, real estate firm uh, specializing in real estate development, uh, development management, marketing, and sales of, of, of facilities for healthcare providers. Uh, this, uh, again, a local company. They are in the business of holding their developments for the long term, their long term ownership of properties they develop and manage, so, and this would be the case here in Steel Creek. Next slide, please. As Dave mentioned, this is a, just over a five acre site made up of three parcels located along Highway 160 Steel Creek, just south of Huntington Meadow. We do adjoin uh, the Masonic adjacent to Steel Creek Masonic Lodge to the south. We do, and to our east is the Huntington Meadow neighborhood, but we are separated from the neighborhood by a greenway site, by property owned by Mecklenburg County, which is planned to be a future greenway. Uh, it's expected to be under construction late next year with completion in late 2023. Uh, we feel this location, due to the configuration of these three parcels, kind of between Hot 160, which is due to be widened, and the existing Walker Branch at the rear, is really not an appropriate location for single family, lo a quality single family development, but is a good location for quality office building as being proposed. Uh, next slide, please. 
wanted to point out our site here in yellow on the site in very close proximity to the Rivergate Rivergate Mixed Use Activity Center. Uh, again, a good location for a, a small scale office development. Uh, this request was presented to the Steel Creek Residents Association in earlier this year. Uh, fairly positive recommendation. We are in communication with them currently and are planning potentially to go back again to them at the end January to present the, to the petition to them one more time. Next slide, please. Uh, here's our site plan. Our, the proposed building will front on Highway 160. It's a two-story building uh, fronting on 160 parking to the rear in site. We do have buffers between us and the Greenway as well as uh, to the, our east and to our west. One of the parcels due to the topography and configuration of the site is really left to be an open space, green space area, this parcel here. Uh, there will be water quality and stormwater detention. We are making improvements to 160 in terms of left turn lane, right turn lane, a 12 foot multi-use path that will be linked to the existing pedestrian network to our south. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, a small, a small scale office building, a good fit for this, these three parcels that are really uh, somewhat separated from the neighborhood to the rear, are separated from the neighborhood to the rear, are isolated parcels along 160. Last slide, please. This is a, a conceptual image of the building architecture. Uh, not, this is not part of the condition of the petition itself, but it is, this is what flagship would plan to build on the site. We'll be happy to answer any questions, Mayor. All right, so we have a speaker opposed to this, Mr. Wayne Ming. Uh, Mr. Ming, you have you have 10 minutes to speak. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Council and uh, all the members. Uh, appreciate the opportunity here to speak. Uh, let me just get my camera on here. Um, oh, yeah, I am. So again, appreciate the opportunity here to speak on this. So I just really have um, four areas that I'd like to present as a, a re as reasons why not to, to support this project. And first of all, I'll start with traffic, and it really aligns with uh, the first petition this evening that was not approved, I believe that was 2021-38. Uh, this is probably just a mile down the road from that project. And, you know, as an 11-year resident of uh, in this community, you know, I've heard year after year or several conversations about, you know, road widening and, you know, having to experience that frustration myself and just trying to get to work. Um, you know, it's, it's really uh, the scenario roads and it just really constricts, you know, uh, free travel on, on that roadway. And, you know, just looking at that, what possibly could be added here, I just see it as, a, as another uh, addition to the constriction and traffic and flow. So that really, uh, I think would impact this area. And I do combine that with everything that really surrounds this space, right? So I, I live in Huntington Forest, uh, which is the neighborhood right behind this project. And right now, right in front of me in this area is a, a development for a pretty large residential area. Uh, I'm not sure the composition of all the properties in there, but I definitely uh, know it's just by the land size that it's, it's, it's gonna be few hundred units well in that property. And then just down the road, there is also another development that's taking place that I can see at this point are townhomes. So we've got an existing community, a new community on the development, another new community on the development. There's a library down the road. There's a middle school that's just right within a quarter mile of this place here, two supermarkets, a strip mall. So when I look at it, and I drive this almost every day. I see the frustration. It's a lot for this small strip of distance, a quarter mile to a half a mile. And I just think this would add to uh, that burden in this area without, you know, some type of accommodation for that. So that would all bucket that under what I consider a, a traffic um, and, and this environmental uh, issue. And, and, you know, it really pivots to my second area, again, you know, environmental. Um, you know, one of the things that attracted me to, to this area or even to just purchase my home specifically was uh, the foliage uh, in the, in, behind me. Uh, you know, so from a personal perspective, yes, I know there will be some 
removal, and I believe there will be some preservation of existing tree lines and so forth. But I do see that, you know, as uh, a reduction in that space. And, you know, even just pointing to the uh, conversation that we just had about the size of the building, uh, you know, even just looking at the screen that's shown right now, you know, 50 foot doesn't look, you know, it, it, I think it's going to be, um, you know, uh, an odd figure in that space. Now, I'm not a, a good judge of height, but I believe my home um, is about a 30 foot height. So I'm just doubling or almost doubling the uh, height of my home. Um, that's a pretty significant structure there. So I just wanted to, to, to point that out as a structure that does not really uh, fit into the existing um, classification. Now, I'll get back to that in my last point. Uh, and then from a third point, again, I wanted to picture this as a safety uh, issue, right? So I believe in the presentation that I heard from the construction or the developer, uh, I believe there's going to be a fence to the side, but based on what um, I believe I heard was that the backside, there would not be a fence. Now, there are existing homes in this property, so there's a home, and then, so there's not through way or access to the back of the property. But based on how, uh, what was described to me in the initial meeting was that, yes, there's a fence to the side, but behind that, it would just be free access, right? So you could just walk through the property and through the tree lines and you'll be back into the properties back there as well. So that was definitely a concern. And again, I just go back to the traffic. There are so, without proper lighting, I mean, just last week or two weeks ago, there was a, a pretty significant accident just outside my community. It's, you know, you're putting another ingress, egress space uh, with future property uh, that will be outside. So I definitely see that as a, a hazard uh, to the community as well. So, you know, there are some good things. Yes, there's a sidewalk. There's not an existing sidewalk, um, which is another topic, but, you know, I just feel like another, in that short of a distance, it's really uh, too much happening in that space. And lastly, you know, this is really about a rezoning from a residential to uh, an O1. I'm learning as I go here to an office space, right? So, uh, and I believe uh, it was said earlier this, that, you know, anyway, it, it, it's moving from residential to an office. But when I look at what's all around right now, as I said, there's my community, there's a new town home, there's a new mixed property that's coming up around, and there's single family homes that all exists. Once you get beyond the lodge, which was rightly shown on the diagram, once you get beyond the lodge, it's all residential going right back to Sled Road, to all the other communities back there, and you go down Winget Park and you got the school down there. It's all residential going back there. So I would like to see that preserved. Um, and then, you know, the question was raised about, or not a question about, but a statement about, um, quality of existing homes. You know, there, there are homes back there right now. There are three homes currently back there that, you know, I assume that people are living in those homes right now. So, you know, um, I, I just feel like based on this, uh, where you can see from this diagram going back north on Steel Creek Road, it's really residential until you get, you know, a little further down closer to like Westinghouse Road. But those are the points again, you know, that I would just really like to highlight and ask the, uh, the council to just consider as part of their uh, deliberation on this point. So appreciate the forum. Thank you, Thank you very much, Mr. Wang. Um, Mr. Wang. Mr. McFain, you have two minutes. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in terms of traffic, <coughs> We are going from a, a, a piece of property that does have two existing homes on it. Uh, we are, we will be adding uh, some traffic. All development would, even new single family would add traffic to this site. I would point out that at, at, based on CDOT's trip projections, we're, we probably would, we will be adding approximately two trips 
per minute in the peak hours, which are the most critical times. So it's not a large amount of traffic from, from the site. I would point out that under single family development, there would be more buildings closer to the rear property lines than the proposed office building. There would not be a 32 foot class B buffer that is being proposed to the east, north and south of the site. Uh, there is a fence to the north because we are looking to reduce that buffer width slightly next to the common open space for the Huntington Forest neighborhood. Uh, there is between this site a 50-foot swim buffer in addition to the 32-foot buffer or part of the 32-foot buffer and then a greenway property. The distance from Mr. Ming's property to the actual building is over 300 feet. It's a two-story building. We think that is a very good and appropriate transition and probably a better transition than if you develop this with lower intensity single family, which would be much closer with no buffers in place. Uh, we are doing more tree save than single family by right would do as well. It is office conditional. I would also point out that office is, is, does not generate nighttime activity or weekend activity, so much quieter neighbor to the residents there. And part of the reason why this site is attractive instead of developing residential, it is a small, narrow site made up of three individual parcels. The widening of 160 will make them narrower and harder to develop with, again, a quality residential development sandwiched between a busy road and, a, and, and the back of, of a greenway or a creek. We don't think it's a, a, a great site for the residential, better site for our office to make that transition for, this, for the reasons I mentioned. Um, I think I think your time is up. And Mr. that's all McKnight. I have to say. Thank you. Are there any questions from the city council of the petitioner or any of the speakers, the staff? Harry none. Do I have a? I'm sorry, Mr. Phipps. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. McVeigh. Yes, sir. It says here that uh, you've committed to improve Steel Creek Road by providing a left turn lane and a right turn lane. And will this be done concurrent with the development? Or are you waiting for the state to do this, their part two or whatever? No, sir. We would that would be concurrent with the development of the site as well as the twelve foot multi use path would all occur as part of the development of the site with the proposed office building. If that's right. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So Any discussion? Um, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Second, Ms. I'm Second. sorry, I need a Mr. Second. Thank you very much. Mr. Newton. Mr. Um, Mr. Bakari. Yes. Mr. Driggs. Yes. Mr. Eggleston. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. Let's see who am I missing here? And Mr. Newton. Yes. All right. We have that closes our public hearing. The next item is item 32. Um, this is petition 2021-155 by Habitat for Humanity for approximately six-tenths of an acre in northwest intersection of Central and Medallion. The current zone is in District 1. The current zoning is office conditional. The proposed zoning is multifamily residential. Staff recommends approval of this petition. And as we um, do this one, we have, we'll have the petitioner um, come speak. Um, Ms. Grant will represent the, the petitioners for, and we have two speakers in opposition, Sherry Stevens-Lewis and Craig Sloan, and Mr. Sloan is in person, and I'm not sure, is Ms. Lewis here? Mr. Sloan is here? Mr. Sloan, thank you. So if Ms. Um, Corey, can you check to see if Ms. Lewis is virtual? Um, so we'll proceed from there. So staff presentation, and then we'll go to Ms. Grant. All right, thank you, Madam Mayor. 2021-155, <clears throat> uh, it's just over a quarter of an acre off Central Ave and Medallion Drive. Uh, the existing zoning of the site, it's split zoned. It's uh, partially R22, that area in orange, and then you can see the outlined area is 06 conditional. That's the area we're focusing on for rezoning this evening. Uh, the adoptive future land use from the East Inlet Area Plan of 2003 recommends single-family uses up to four dwelling units per acre for the site. 
Uh, this is a conventional petition, so there's no associated site plan with, uh, with the petition, no outstanding issues. Uh, staff does recommend approval. As uh, st stated, the site is primarily zoned R22. Uh, there's a pretty large consistency of R22 on the other side of Medallion Drive as well. Uh, staff feels that uh, amending this piece that's zoned R6 to that R22 would provide a more uniform development uh, of the parcel uh, and allow for some consistency across both intersections there on Medallion Drive. Uh, so again, we'll be happy to take any questions uh, following the petitioner's presentation as well as the opposition presentation, uh, and we'll go from there. Thank you. All right, Ms. Grant. Good evening, Mayor Lowes, members of council, members of the presenting committee. Bridget Grant, land use consultant with Morian Van Allen. Pleased to be here tonight um, representing Habitat for Humanity with Jeff Brown and here tonight with Laura Belcher and Bob Glaskenkamp with Habitat. Next slide. Next slide. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit given the conventional nature of this petition. Next slide. If you can jump ahead to the slide with the split zoning image. Keep going. Keep going. It's very different to not have control of the mouse. This is perfect. As Dave mentioned, this is really just a technical cleanup. Overall, the site combined is like 0.6 acres. 0.27 acres of the site is zoned 06 CD. It's like a remnant from the 1980s. The balance of the site the 0 0.36 is already zoned for R22MF. Again, this is just our effort to clean up the site and put unified zoning across the entirety of it, which is consistent with what's across Medallion, which is also R22MF. With that, we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you. All right, Mr. Sloan. I know those steps are not easy for any of us, I think. We do yes, we do. I think the building's about 40 years old. They probably couldn't afford an excavator at the time, escalator at the time. That would be perfect. Yeah. Be perfect. Mm -hmm. I brought you a petition from our neighborhood. Um, this is Kilborn Acres Association. We don't want multifamily in our neighborhood. We're covered up with multifamily. This has nothing to do with Habitat. I've worked with Habitat over the years. I've worked with the African groups. I've worked with um, the Montagnards. I've worked with the, a lot of different groups. So mine is short and sweet. Overwhelmingly, I hope you all got a copy. I provided a copy of our petition. Uh, we don't want multifamily in our neighborhood. We have a great cross-section of uh, families, young to old, uh, and it's wonderful. So that's my whole, I'll let you want me to say something else. No, I think that you've said, and we have the petition, so thank you for bringing that forward. If you are, would like to make it easier than going up the stairs, there's an exit on this side of the door. I can go up easier. Going down is hard. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Sloan. You. Now we have um, two minutes for the petitioner. Hello? Um, oh, Miss Lewis? Well are you, yes, I'm here. I am so sorry. We've, um, I, I had a note that you were not, but now Ms. Grant before, Ms. Lewis is going to speak. Ms. Lewis, you have additional time to speak. Yes. Thank you so much. And, and I was having te technical difficulties, so please forgive me. Not a um, problem. <laughs> okay. Um, I would just also like to follow up with what Mr. Sloan said. Um, we talk about affordable housing, and that goes without saying that that's one thing that is very much needed in Charlotte. Um, so I do agree with that. And the 2040 plan, um, I think that it's a, a wonderful plan looking at it. But our concern is just the sanctity of the neighborhood. Um, Kilburn Negus has been a well-established neighborhood. So you have 
residents that have been here for 30, 40 years or more, um, who all own their home. And just looking at just some of the things in regards to what the townhome will bring, one of them will definitely be traffic. Um, you have traffic that is just really rampant on Central Avenue, just day and night. And then with adding the townhomes and not being able to actually get out of the neighborhood, um, I think that that's something to definitely look at. Um, also, when we had a, a meeting with Habitat um, with Humanity, I do believe that it was this year over the summer. Um, there were some questions in regards to, well, what else are you providing for the residents um, in regards to housing, as well as um, I think it was a driveway. And are you providing anything for children that live there? And that was one of the things that they said that they were not providing as well as nothing for children. So you're thinking about, um, you know, bringing townhomes into the neighborhood. You don't have any any kind of structure or anything for the children to play. Um, and we just don't feel that this would be a, a very good fit within the neighborhood itself. Um, we know that Eastland is a structure that you have a lot of up and coming things going there. And we were wondering why could this development not be moved there? Why wasn't that something that may have even been thought of instead of just at the interest of a single family neighborhood? So the last thing I would like to say is we just want you to just please reconsider just keeping this a single family neighborhood um, where you have um, an established neighborhood. You have people that definitely are working together who um, love Central Avenue, but we would like to keep it a single family neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Now, Ms. Grant, you have two minutes. I won't use that much time. We just want to clarify that there is already multifamily zoning on the site. We're just cleaning up the backside of it. And again, given the size of the site, it's very limited in the number of units that could actually fit on this site, which doesn't typically necessitate the open space amenities you might see in a larger community. With that, happy to answer any questions. All right. Are there any questions from the City Council? Mr. Eggleston? Yeah, those are two of the points I was going to make. One is that in on 0.27 acres, there's not but so many units that could generate but so much traffic. Um, as someone who, and good to see you again, Mr. Sloan, I, and I appreciate the work that you have done over the years with Habitat for Humanity, so you know this as well as anybody. Um, when we're talking about what does Habitat for Humanity provide for children, what it provides for children is a safe place to live. And I think that is foundational to anything that we aspire for the children in this community. Uh, to have and to achieve. So, you know, I, I do think that the point is, has been made already. And Dave, I don't know if you can pull up the, uh, the color-coded existing zoning and land use map for illustration, but if not, I'll just tell you that half of the map is orange, and the orange indicates multifamily zoning that exists already along Central, and, and then further down, then there it is. So all of the orange indicates stuff that's already zoned for multifamily. Some of it is built as multifamily, some of it is not. Um, I think the point that Mr. Sloan and Ms. Lewis are making is speaking more to the nature of the yellow area that you see as you go down Sheridan and down Medallion, and that remains R4. That's not in question here, but I think up against Central Avenue, we're talking about rezoning something that could be built out as office and, and making it bringing it into alignment with what we've already got along Central Avenue, which is is zoned for multifamily. Um, I, I just think that I appreciate the, the engagement on this. I think some of the fears are unfounded on such a small site with so little potential for number of units and so little potential for generation of traffic. And I just applaud the work that, that Habitat for Humanity is doing. And, um, and with it being a conventional petition, there's not but so much we can uh, we can dig into the details beyond that. Are there any other questions for anyone, Mr. Phipps? Yeah, are these are uh, uh, for sale townhome units. It's a conventional zoning, so we conventional 
So we no, sorry. All right. Motion to close. We have a motion to close. And do I have a second? Mr. Phipps, do I have a second? Yeah. Thank you. All right, we have a motion to close the public hearing. Um, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Um, I'm here. Watlington, yes. Ms. Watlington, thank you. All right, the motion to close passes. All right, the next yes. item is item I'm third. I'm sorry, who else is here? Mayor Pro Tem? Yeah. All right. And is anyone else here that I have not been able to see? I, it's very tough because Mr. not seeing everyone at one time on the screen. All right, so I'm just going to do Mr. Winston, Mr. Graham, Ms. Ajmira. Okay, thank you. All right, the next item is item 33. Petition 2021-136 by Habitat for Humanity for approximately 2.3 acres located on the East Lane Drive west of W.T. Harris. It's in District 5. The current zoning is single-family residential. The proposed zoning is multifamily residential conditional. Staff recommends approval of this petition upon resolution of outstanding issues and technical revisions on site, building design, transportation, and environment. We'll have a staff presentation on this one and then we have one speaker against miss grant will represent again uh, the petitioner and our speaker um jessica keenan will speak against the petition staff presentation thank you all right thank you madam mayor 2021 136 2.38 acres uh it's at the end of east lane drive uh, as you can see just to the west uh, of wt harris boulevard uh, and east of Independence Boulevard. Current zoning of the property uh, is zoned R4. Uh, proposed zoning for the petition is to go to R8 uh, MF conditional. The adopted future land use from the Independence Boulevard area plan does recommend residential up to four dwelling units per acre. Uh, the proposal with this petition is to allow up to 18 multifamily dwellings depicted in a townhome style for a density of 7.56 units per acre. Does limit building height to two stories or 48 feet. Uh, also specifies that no more than four buildings would be allowed on the site. Does provide a class, uh, a 20 foot class C buffer, uh, which could be reduced 25% with a fence along the property boundaries that would be adjacent to the single family homes. Also states that initial sale of the units will be to those earning up to 80% area median income. Vehicle and pedestrian access uh, would be from East Lane Drive. That would be through a private drive, which would include a sidewalk. Also provides an eight foot planning strip and six foot sidewalk along the site frontage of East Lane Drive. Architectural standards have been provided to, uh, to talk about building facade materials, minimum size of porches and stoops, pitched roofs, uh, screening of mechanical equipment, meter banks, etc. cetera. Uh, it also limits the height of detached lighting uh, to 21 feet in height. Uh, staff does recommend approval of this petition. Uh, we do have some outstanding issues and technical revisions related to site and building design, as well as transportation and environment to work through. Uh, as mentioned, it is inconsistent with the Independence Boulevard area plan uh, for residential density up to four dwelling units per acre, but staff does feel that uh, the proposal is still an appropriate uh, transition and, and addition of infill uh, that would provide some different housing options in the area. Uh, so we'll be happy to take any questions following the petitioner's presentation as well as a uh, presentation from opposition. Thank you. All right, Ms. Grant. Good evening, Mayor Lyles, members of council, members of the zoning committee. Again, Bridget Grant, land use consultant with Moran Van Allen. Here tonight with Laura Belcher and Bob Blesskenkamp with Habitat for Humanity. Next slide. The development team is again Habitat for Humanity working with Maureen Van Allen on the zoning side. Next slide. I do think it's important to talk a little bit about how important Habitat for Humanity is as a partner for us. The government says housing is affordable if a family spends no more than 30% of their income to live here. It's important to note that one-sixth of Mecklenburg County families spend more than 50% of their household income on housing. Next slide. Habitat solves affordability. Household payments are never more than 30% of the income, including interest. Families receive financial education prior to buying their home, sweat equity and home ownership, classes that set up neighborhood success. And with Habitat, again, as was mentioned before, you have a path to stability and wealth. Next slide. Outcomes of a Habitat home, childhood education improves significantly. There's use of social services down by over 
86% of families say their lives improve because of Habitat. So it's really about closing the affordability gap equals closing the achievement gap. Next slide. I'm not going to go into the site. I think Dave did a great job on that. Next slide. Next slide. Sorry, there's a, there's a little bit of a blend of the two presentations. Next slide. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Laura Belcher to talk a little bit about this slide or this um, site in particular and the benefits of this. Ms. Belcher, um, are you still, you're statewide now for Habitat or two states? Tell me where you guys are. We are um, regional as in we cover two counties, most of Mecklenburg County and Iredell County. So okay. um, I think you ought to be two states. I think you do a great job. The Thank mayor you. just gave you a promotion. <laughs> She may that. not want that. <laughs> All right, Ms. Belcher, you have um, an additional eight minutes. Thank you. Um, Mayor, um, council members, and the rezoning committee. Uh, I'm Laura Belcher. I'm the president and CEO of Habitat of the Charlotte Region. I'm thrilled to be here um, because of the long relationship we've had with the city working together in partnership to remove barriers to home ownership. Uh, tonight, I want to share a little bit about the vision we've got for this property at the end of East Lane. This is a special piece of land as it found us as opposed to Habitat going out and seeking and acquiring it. In 2019, we were approached by the Brooks family, specifically the brothers David and Scott Brooks, owners of Brooks Sandwich Shop in Noda. The family owned this two plus acre land uh, in their family. Uh, it was acquired by their father in the 1950s. David and Scott considered multiple options to sell the property, but they agreed utilizing the property for affordable housing was its best and highest use and they wanted to achieve that. It was with that generosity of spirit that the Brooks family donated the property to Habitat Charlotte Region and asked us to serve as many families as we could to leverage the donation. Now we're committed to honoring donor requests, especially this one because in late 2019, Scott Brooks lost his life in a violent act while opening up the sandwich shop. Honoring donor desires is always important, but it's particularly poignant at this time. David Brooks, Scott's brother, wrote a letter to council that I'll get to the clerk to share with you, uh, but here's one of the excerpts of what he has in here. He says, it's been very disconcerting to observe hardworking families being displaced with no affordable housing and very few options. We wanted to help with a solution. Bringing affordable home ownership to 17 families on this site will impact not just the initial residents, but the generations to come. This neighborhood has home ownership rates that are significantly less than the city averages, and we know that home ownership is one of the most effective drivers to economic mobility. Homeowners have household wealth that is 40 times greater than lifetime renters. Our homeowners are hardworking residents that have lower wages jobs that challenges their home ownership opportunities. However, they share the same hopes and dreams for their families as their soon-to-be neighbors. We are thrilled to be able to change the trajectory of lives by working on this new development. Thank you for your time, your service to the community. Happy holidays. Thank you. Anything? No, the only thing I want to say is we've asked staff to modify. We still are looking at the PowerPoint presentation from the Central Avenue site, so I believe we've got the other one available as well. Okay. So our next speaker is Jessica Keehan, and she is virtual. Ms. Keehan? Hi. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I am um, with my neighbors and we are in opposition of rezoning this plot of land. We are a single family street, a single family residential street, and this 17 town home development will be off of our main street with no access to any other street or main road, which is completely um, different than any other town home unit that I've ever seen. They've always been on part of a main street and this one will not be. The traffic on our street is incredible. And I know that Habitat has a lot of studies saying that, I'm sorry, um, MBA law has a lot of studies that will tell you the traffic is not gonna increase that much, but you're talking about 17 units in a not 10 minute neighborhood. We don't have close bus stops. We don't have any close um, employers in the area. You, most of the people that will be in these units will be driving. So you're talking about a minimum of 17 cars on this street daily. We already have a very tight street, and if you have two cars parked on the street, you can barely get through. I had this experience Friday night. I had to actually ask a neighbor to move their car so that I could get down my street to my home because they were having guests over. 
this is just going to increase with the 17 townhomes. I know that they have adjusted their parking, um, their parking lot to make sure that there are plenty of units, but if you increase that to two units per townhome, you're talking about 34 cars per townhome. That's not leaving a lot of excess. If people have children, if people have visiting families, they're still going to spill over into our streets. Additionally, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my notes. Give me just one second. We have a lot of noise pollution on the street. Um, since a lot of our, our homeowners here have been here from seven to 10 years, and since then, a lot of people have gone with the housing market and have decided to rent out their houses or sell to investors. That's a cause a lot of noise pollution and having 17 townhomes, no matter the barriers, are still gonna increase that noise pollution for us through loud cars, through um, the townhomes themselves playing music and, and just general noise pollution. The barriers are gonna take a long time to grow because I don't anticipate them putting full, uh, full grown trees onto that street immediately. Prior townhomes that Habitat Community gave us an example in Mooresville were already on multifamily unit lots. They have access to major roads, unlike this one. This one we don't have access to um, WT Harris at all. There are several streets that you have to go through, including the end of our street. The construction I acknowledge is just going to happen eventually. The construction traffic from that is going to be loud. I work from home, I'm home all day. And so that's gonna be an immediate burden for me. And we just face, um, we face a demographic change with these 17 townhomes. I acknowledge that Habitat is doing a great thing, but there's no reason that it can't be single family unit homes on this property. That'll bring greater responsibility with the ownership and you'll have a piece of property to have, and it'll probably lead to less turnover in those houses. These houses will be owned by the, the, the people who are going to be living in them and they have the right to sell them after a certain period of time that's gonna change the demographic of this neighborhood entirely. So I implore you to please keep this as a single family resident street and zone and, and keep our homes within the same units um, as these Habitat humanity, for Humanity homes would be. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you have two minutes for a rebuttal. I'll just take a minute and then see if Laura wants to take one. I do want to say that we are pleased to say that we align with four of the policies of the comp plan. Goal one, working towards providing a 10 minute neighborhood, neighborhood diversity and inclusion, housing access for all, and sale and equitable mobility. I also want to point out that these units can't be um, rented or airbnb out to people. So there is some certainty on the type of person or resident that's going to live as part of this community. Laura, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, I've just reinforced that as well. We work with all of our families. They'll go through financial literacy and homeowner readiness classes, and then we will deed restrict these units so that they are owner occupied and not rented um, for the current owner and then for future owners. Thank you. All right, um, council members, um, I have both Mr. Eggleston and Mr. Newton. Mr. Newton, go ahead. Mr. Newton. Okay, well. Okay. I'll go first. All right. So uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to start by acknowledging uh, everyone's uh, uh, the statements, I think, from the previous petition, but also what I've heard in this petition, uh, everyone acknowledging the value of uh, Habitat and all that you do. Uh, having said that, um, what I heard from the, the speaker pertained to, to noise pollution uh, and traffic concerns. Uh, I do remember attending the uh, community meeting on this, and I, I think it, it was traffic that was really echoed more than anything else, those concerns within that meeting. Uh, I, I think it's important that we, uh, we take into account entitlements. So when we talk about things like, like density, for example, um, we know that we're gonna have heightened entitlements for density in the near future under the comp plan. Uh, this doesn't uh, skew if, if not um, result in uh, lower uh, than, uh, than what, so a lower density than what I think we might anticipate in the near future. Uh, having said that as well, I think from the standpoint of, of traffic, uh, our materials suggest that the traffic is gonna be below uh, even current day entitlements. Uh, I wanted to ask staff about that because the, the speaker uh, did allude to, to more people altogether um, because we're going to see more units than, than what's uh, 
uh, under our, our, our current zoning today. Granted, let me be clear, I, I think we're going to see a change in that in the future, uh, and the community might actually be more welcoming <laughs> of this in the future, given uh, where we're headed. But, uh, Mr. Petten, could you comment on that, how we could find ourselves in a situation where there are more units, uh, single family attached, uh, than, than what would be under or envisioned under current zoning, single family detached, but yet less traffic? Uh, yeah, I'll probably go ahead and let uh, Brandon with CDOT answer uh, how they calculated that out. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Hello again. So I think this might be best in a follow up report, but I will say that. Um, whenever we pull our trip generation information, it's from the Institute of Traffic Engineers. And so they take historical data of the types of uses and then they develop a calculator. And that's what we use with the different types of uses in square footage or, or amount of units. And then that gives us those trip generation numbers. So, but I could follow up more in a uh, follow up report for you on that if you want. I would appreciate that, and I would appreciate following up with the community about that as well. Sure. Uh, we have programs. So, for what it's worth, uh, Mrs. Keegan, we do have programs for traffic mitigation as well, and I think that that might be worth exploring. So if we could put together a meeting between the community and CDOT, I think that would be helpful. Uh, I wanted to ask about the noise pollution concern. Um, I, I think that, that that concern could, could be um, associated with any new development, right? Um, this not being uh, multifamily, but being kind of that in-between that we talk so much about within the, the, uh, the comprehensive plan from the standpoint of, of affordable uh, development. This is also that gap when it comes to affordable home ownership that we've been striving for so much. What we, you know, seems to have eluded us. Uh, I think kind of the hierarchy is kind of multifamily development, NOAA, which we talk about needing more of in and of itself, but then this, right, which is affordable home ownership. But from the standpoint of noise pollution, can you comment on some of these barriers, maybe uh, the petitioner talking about uh, some of the buffers on site and, and how those are going to manifest themselves, say, upon development and then moving forward? Thank you, Councilmember Newton. I think you're speaking to the landscape buffers that are on the periphery of the site. If we could go back to the site plan. There's a good bit of topography on the site. We're going to do our best. There's actually more buffer than, than is shown there. We're trying to maintain what's happening in people's backyards. And so we do have a good bit of buffer, potentially up to 50 or 60 feet between where the parking lot is and the property line for the existing single family residential. One of the concerns, and I think that that's also worthy of further conversation, uh, just so we get a better sense and idea of, of how that will mitigate any noise um, or noise pollution. Uh, one of the concerns that, that did come to mind for me was any overflow parking. But I look at this plan and I'm seeing, it, am, am I counting this correctly? We're talking 46 spaces. I, yes, we, we're talking that many spaces. We did go back, 43. We did go back and revisit after meeting with the neighbors and tried to amplify the amount of parking that would be provided on the site to make sure we accounted for all of the residents. Yeah, so roughly like two and a half per, per unit, which is a, a lot, I think, com compared to what we normally see. So anyhow, I definitely think that, that it's worth continuing having conversations with the community so we're all on the same page. Uh, but, uh, but those are all the comments I have right now. I do look forward to following up with Mrs. Keegan and the petitioner as well uh, before next month. All right, Mr. Eggleston. I think most of uh, what I was going to say has been covered. So right. as far as entitlements on the trips, it's, it's actually getting better. And the point about the turnover of neighborhoods and units, I think Habitat actually helps solidify the community and prevent that sort of a turn that they're seeking to avoid. So keep up the good work, Habitat. All right. Any other comments from anyone virtually? All right. Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Mr. Bakari? Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Yes, Eggle for Thank you. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ashmira? All right, thank you. 
Um, we have next we'll go to item 34. And I don't believe we have any other opposition, so we may be able to um, get to the end of this before 10, I think, today. All right, um, petition 2021-075 by Kinger Homes, approximately 7.6 acres located on the southwest corner of Steel Creek Road in Hamilton. It is in our ETJ closest to District 3. The current zoning is urban residential conditional and the proposed zoning is urban residential conditional and staff recommends approval and Mr. Patton will let us know the difference between urban residential conditional and the second resident urban residential conditional. Right. Mr. Patton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And 20 we have one speaker on this item and he is virtual Travis G Gen Gendrus. All right, let's go. All right, thank you, Madam Mayor. 2021 7.69 acres on Hamilton Road and Steel Creek Road. Property is currently zoned UR1, <clears throat> which is uh, urban residential conditional. Uh, the proposed zoning is for UR2 conditional. Uh, the adopted future land use from the Steel Creek area plan uh, calls for residential up to five dwelling units per acre. That was after an amendment uh, from the original rezoning of this site, uh, took that uh, recommendation, that was back in 2018, uh, made that recommendation up to five DUA for the site. Uh, the proposal is essentially amending the layout of a previously approved rezoning petition. Uh, that previous approval back in 2018 uh, was for 32 uh, single family attached dwelling units. This proposal is also for 32 single family attached dwelling units. Uh, the main changes are to the lot to layouts and configurations of the project overall. Uh, we, like I said, still have those 32 units. We propose, or the petition proposes primarily front-loaded units versus primarily alley-loaded units. So that was one of the other changes that occurred uh, between these two petitions. Maximum building height, it's listed as 100 feet. Uh, we did list that as an outstanding issue. The previous approved height was for 40 feet. Uh, so we did list that. It may have just been a, a typo based on the, the zoning classification that was being requested. But again, that's an outstanding item for us. Uh, it also proposes a six foot multi-use path along Hamilton Road as opposed to a 12 foot multi-use path. Uh, that's also an outstanding issue uh, for staff to have addressed. Uh, like I said, that original proposal was for 12 feet. So we'd like to see that maintained and carried forward. Uh, staff does recommend approval of this petition upon resolution of some of those outstanding issues mentioned, as well as a few others related to site and building design and transportation, and then also a request of technical revision related to transportation. Uh, it's consistent with that Steel Creek area plan, essentially consistent with the same general outcome of the previous rezoning of 32 attached dwelling units, just a different configuration. Uh, and so again, staff does recommend approval and we'll be happy to take any questions uh, following the presentation by the petitioner. Thank you. All right, um, our next speaker is Mr. Travis Gendrus. Um, Mr. Gendrus? Yes, uh, thank you all. Um, yeah, I just want to touch base on what uh, Dave had uh, just mentioned that yes, this was previously rezoned 2018-077. Uh, um, it is mostly just a reconfiguration of the site plan to uh, to allow more more parking, as you saw with the with the front loaded units. Um, previous plan only had eight uh, eight units that were front loaded uh, with with driveways, and now we are proposing, I believe, um, excuse me, um, we are proposing I think uh, sixteen um, sixteen units. And um, and then as well the uh, the, the, the rear loaded units they will be um, they'll have the front 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 facing elevations along uh, on along Hamilton and no additional increase in density and I will um, I will end there thank you all right are there any questions for the petitioner hearing no questions for the petitioner um, do I have a motion to close so move Madam Mayor. I need a second from someone virtually, please. Okay. Thank you. All right, roll call. Mr. Phipps, Mr. Winston, Mr. Bakari, Mr. Driggs. Yes. Mr. Eggleston, Mr. Graham, Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Newton. Yes. Ms. Watlington. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. Council Member Ajmira. We have the yeses in the back. Yeah, yeah, in thank you very so. much. All right. <laughs> thank you very much. The next item is item 35. Petition 2021-091 by Chick-fil-A. 
approximately 1.2 acres located at the southeast intersection of South Boulevard and Carolina Pavilion Drive. It's in District 6. The current zoning is transit-oriented development community center. Proposed zoning is mixed-use development optional. Staff recommends approval upon resolution of technical revisions related to site and building design. Um, we have um, one, two speakers. After the staff presentation, Mr. Carmichael, and I believe everyone is for, so we have three minutes and three minutes and three minutes. Okay. Mr. Patton. All right. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 2021-091. Uh, it's just over an acre on South Boulevard and Carolina Pavilion. It's a Chick-fil-A that's uh, down in that area. Uh, the existing zoning is TODCC, and the proposed zoning is for MUD optional. Uh, the Sharon and I-485 Transit Station Area Plan does recommend transit-oriented development mixed use for the site. Uh, the proposal is to uh, do away with the existing Type 1 EDE uh, that also has accessory drive-through and construct an entirely new uh, model, which would be closer to South Boulevard. Uh, the drive-through lanes would be located behind the building. Uh, also would allow a building up to 5,200 square feet and up to 30 feet in height. Current building is 3,584 square feet, so uh, a modest increase. Uh, does provide direct pedestrian access to the building from a new sidewalk along Carolina Pavilion, a uh, six-foot sidewalk, and uh, which uh, Carolina Pavilion would have a six-foot sidewalk, and then a multi-use path along South Boulevard uh, via an eight-foot sidewalk. Uh, the uh, area of outdoor dining uh, would be on the northern end of the building near Carolina Pavilion Drive. Uh, part of the uh, changes to the site layout would also modify locations of driveways into the site. Uh, this would include a two-way drive along the east property line uh, onto a shared drive in the shopping center and then a one-way in and one-way out on Carolina Pavilion, so no access coming off South Boulevard. Uh, also commits to placement of a no-U-turn sign at the end of the meeting on Carolina Pavilion Drive. Uh, installs a six-foot sidewalk uh, along uh, Carolina Pavilion and a 12-foot multi-use path along the site's frontage of South Boulevard, and also requests some optional provisions, which would be to allow an accessory drive-through uh, service lane and window, uh, and also uh, to not adhere to the building entrance requirements from Section 9.8 uh, of the Zoning Ordinance. Staff does recommend approval of this petition. We do have some technical revisions related to site and building design to work through. Uh, it is inconsistent with the transit station area plan recommend, recommendation for transit-oriented development. Uh, just a little bit of background uh, on the site. As we mentioned, it is TOD. Uh, it's going to mud. That would be to accommodate the, the drive-through. Uh, typically, we would see potentially a TOD, TR request, maybe with some conditions. Uh, the reason that's not uh, feasible with this is some parking uh, uh, commitments that are uh, in place between the existing use and the existing shopping center, meaning they can't go below a certain number. Uh, and that number actually then puts them above what's allowed in TODTR, so the MUD is something that uh, is being proposed rather than that. Uh, also, just to give you some updates on the TOD ordinance and some potential changes that are pending, uh, we do or we are looking at provisions to allow facilities like this that have existing drive-throughs in a TOD district uh, take on this kind of project where they can upgrade their building, upgrade their facilities, uh, and maintain the drive-through that they currently have. We would still uh, you know, treat non-existing drive-throughs and new drive-throughs in, in generally the same fashion, but these uses uh, that have existing ones, uh, there will be more provisions in the TOD, uh, potential TOD ordinance amendments uh, that would allow for this type of outcome. So uh, hopefully we see less rezonings to accomplish this and you know, more, uh, more projects that can go through just the administrative process uh, to achieve this outcome. So just wanted to give you all a little bit of background on that prior to the petitioner's presentation. And with that, we'll be happy to take any questions once they're completed. Thank you. All right. Mr. Carmichael. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem and members of the City Council and the Zoning Committee. My name is John Carmichael. I'm here and I'm here on behalf of Chick fil A. With me tonight are Chase Shaw of Chick fil A, Casey Durden, the site engineer, and Melissa Schwartz of Jones Lang LaSalle. Next slide, please. The site contains about 1.2 acres located on the east side of South Boulevard at the intersection of Carolina, Carolina Pavilion Drive South and South Boulevard. Next slide. And the site is just to the north of the South Boulevard I-45 interchange, as you can see from the slide. Uh, additionally, the site is a part of the Carolina Pavilion Shopping Center, which is located, that surrounds the site on the north, south, and east. Next slide. 
And this is just an aerial of the existing Chick-fil-A restaurant on the site that's been in place since 1995. So it served the community for over 26 years at that location. Next slide. Uh, the site's currently zoned Todd CC, as Mr. Patton indicated. The shopping center proper to the east is zoned Todd TR. Next slide. And the request is to go from Todd CC to Mud Oak. The purpose, as Mr. Patton stated, is to build a new, allow Chick-fil-A to build a new restaurant building on the site with accessory drive-through windows. Once again, the new building will replace the existing Chick-fil-A restaurant building that's been in place since 1995. And the new building would allow Chick-fil-A to better serve its customers uh, in, a, in a new facility and in a more efficient facility. Next slide. Uh, the Todd CC does not allow accessory drive-through lanes and windows. Todd TR does allow accessory drive-in drive-through lanes and windows. Next slide. However, as Ms. Petten alluded to, the Todd TR has a maximum parking ratio of five spaces per 1,000 square feet of floor area. The shopping center's restrictive covenants require a minimum of 10 parking spaces for 1,000 square feet of gross floor area, so the site cannot comply with the Todd TR and the shopping center's restrictive covenants. So therefore, the request is to go to Mud Island. Next slide. Uh, and then this is briefly the site plan. Uh, as Mr. Patton indicated, there'll be a 12 foot multi use path along the site's front on South Boulevard. And in designing the site, the petitioner tried to incorporate uh, Todd and urban design elements into the site. Uh, these include the fact that the drive through would be internal and there'd be no parking or drive lanes between the buildings and the adjacent streets. We appreciate staff's positive recommendation. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions you may have, and we appreciate your consideration of this request. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for the petitioner? Hearing none, do I have a motion? Oh, Mr. Phipps? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I had a question about, again, a similar question I had earlier about the, uh, the traffic impact study. Let the record show that I do, I love some Chick-fil-A, all right? But um, the success of Chick-fil-A in terms of its drive-throughs and traffic patterns are such that uh, they have a lot of them that I see, especially the new ones, even with the modified uh, um, drive-throughs, have trouble uh, with their queuing in terms of, because they're so popular, the restaurants are so popular that I'm wondering, do we have any concerns with the queuing aspects? Uh, I, I don't know that uh, that uh, that the queuing can be uh, just confined to the interior site, or if there's some spillover effects uh, on other adjacent parcels you know, or areas or other streets. You know, aside from their internal site. So I noticed that. You know, it's like, what, 2,450 traffic uh, uh, trips there, and our trigger is 2,500. So given their history of, the, you know, queuing issues, uh, lunchtime or whatever, or any time for Chick-fil-A, do we have any concerns with that at all? Because I don't think 50, again, <laughs> I don't know if that's enough of a cushion for a Chick-fil-A. Yes, yeah, so the 20, 2,450 trips wouldn't require the traffic impact study, um, like you mentioned. We did have the opportunity here to separate out the existing driveway, where currently it's, it's about 150 feet, maybe a little bit less, away from South Boulevard, um, and that's ingress and egress currently. And so we had the opportunity to separate those out, and the petitioners provide the ingresses much further away um, to the tune of 350 or 400 feet uh, for the ingress, the closest ingress to South Boulevard, uh, which allows more queuing back on that private access drive um, and alleviated both CDOT and NCDOT's concerns about it spilling back onto the public road in South Boulevard. I guess then only time can tell then, I guess once it gets constructed, we'll see. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Is there any other question for the petitioner? Hearing none, do I have a motion to close? Yeah. I, oh, I'm sorry, there's a question. Ms. Johnson, I'm sorry. Yes, Mayor Pro Yeah, my hand's up though. So. Ms. Johnson. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Hello? Miss Johnson, okay. can you hear me? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know. Something's wrong with my video. There we go. Okay, so I just wanted to comment on what Council Member Phipps said uh, for the second time today. Last week when we were, we had a presentation, and I'm going through my documents when we got an update regarding transportation. I don't remember who that was, but perhaps we can schedule a meeting offline because there were some proposed changes to consider cumulative impact um, um, for traffic studies. That's one of the things that I know I've been saying for a while, and it's, it's, a, it's an obvious concern. So I think that that's an area that maybe we can look at sooner than later. I don't know if we have to wait until the UDO is approved or the traffic mobility plan is approved. Um, if any of the other council members have a thought on that, but that is something that they're considering. I, um, we talked about it last week, the cumulative impact. So these are great, great questions. When you talk about 2,497 trips or 2,450 trips, when we know that there's been recent growth uh, at or around the area. So I'm certainly, I hope that we as a council can move on this. Um, very soon and maybe change the policy. I know that um, the um, the staff member is giving us the answer that we already know and, and thank you for that. But if there's no wiggle room, then it will be up to us as council to, to change the policy. So I, I look forward to that discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, did you have your hand up? Uh, I, I just wanted to ask, Madam Mayor, I think you had asked about this about getting some sort of data on drive-throughs, um, whether or not, you know, sort of what the trends are, because I can see this both ways, right? Just because you don't have that additional drive-through capacity does not mean it's gonna reduce the demand for getting into Chick-fil-A, so then it dumps out onto the street. And at least this one isn't right on South Boulevard, but are, are we gonna get any information on that about sort of best practices on drive-throughs and where it's going and when to when to approve them? We did ask for that report um, to give us some trends to talk to some people in retail. You know, when we were doing the 2040 plan, there was this whole, you know, idea about coffee shops and drive and drive and fast food and where are they? You know, I I, I know this area um, as and it's not going to block South Boulevard like a Randolph Road is blocked. And then they have that huge shopping center parking space behind that, and they're just moving closer to make sure that um, it's a little bit of a different situation for this one. But I think the question overall is that if we're going to go about this idea of what's 2040 like. And so, Allison, if you can just give us an update on where we are with looking at drive throughs and its associated um, um, design and future that's expected at some point in the follow-up report. I think we, we all do need to kind of weigh in on that one and see where we are. Okay, um, so we will follow up on that, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other question? All right, so with that, that is, um, do I have a motion to close? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. With the roll call vote, Mr. Phipps. Yes. Mr. Winston. Mr. Bakari. Yes. Mr. Driggs. Yes. Mr. Eggleston. Yes. Mr. Graham. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Newton. Yes. Ms. Watlington. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. Ms. Ajmira. All right. The next item is item 36. Petition 21118 by Integrated Properties for approximately nine acres located on Westinghouse Boulevard between Park and Quality Drives. It's in District 3. The current zoning is light industrial. The proposed zoning is general industrial conditional. Staff recommends approval of this petition um, upon resolution of some revisions around transportation site and building design. Um, we do not have any, oh, we do have speakers signed up. Um, Walter Fields will be here in person to speak to the item. Mr. Patton. 
All right, thank you, Madam Mayor. 2021 118, it's just over nine acres, uh, existing uh, business on Westinghouse Boulevard. The current zoning is I 1. Proposed zoning is for I 2 conditional. Uh, adopt a future land use from the Steel Creek Area Plan, uh, recommends industrial warehouse distribution uh, for this site uh, and the general surrounding area. Uh, the proposal for this petition includes uh, uses permitted in I-1 and I-2, as well as accessory outdoor storage and vehicle parking, loading and staging. It does prohibit uses in I-2, such as petroleum storage facilities, junkyards, medical waste disposal facilities, railroad freight yards, abattoirs, construction and demolition landfills as a principal use. Uh, things like foundries and quarries, raceways or drag strips and waste incinerators are all in that list of prohibited uses. Uh, there would be a maximum of two buildings on the site. It does provide uh, for 114 foot but undisturbed buffer adjacent to single family residential uh, that will basically uh, maintain that existing old growth vegetation that is already out there on the site. Uh, does dedicate 50 feet of right away from the center line of Westinghouse Boulevard and provides an eight foot planting strip and six foot sidewalk along that same frontage. Uh, and also limits new freestanding lighting to 30 feet in height and requires that they be downwardly directed. Uh, essentially, the request from I-1 to I-2 is to continue to accommodate the existing use. Uh, it's outgrown some of the outdoor storage that's out there, and they need to go to the I-2 district to allow that to expand some uh, while maintaining that buffer to those single-family residential uses. Uh, staff does recommend approval of this petition. to have some technical revisions related to transportation and site and building design to work through. Uh, it is consistent with the Steel Creek area plan, and again, staff does recommend approval. We'll be happy to take any questions uh, following Mr. Fields' presentation. Thank you. All right. Mr. Fields, you have three minutes. Madam Mayor, Madam Pro Tem, members of council, and Madam Chairman, and the members of the Zoning Committee, I thank you for um, meeting in person. It's so nice to be able to be in the room with you all instead of watching on a screen this big in my office. I, I, I'm, glad we're, I'm glad we're getting to the point where we can do that. Uh, my client here, Integrated Properties LLC, is Mr. David Myers. Um, this property has been um, in use for a number of years, well over a decade. Um, they manufacture pieces and parts for large utility systems. In fact, the city of, uh, city of Charles is one of their largest clients for water systems and things of that nature. And they've been so successful over the years um, that they've actually sort of outgrown the area they have on their site to put their raw products coming in and to stage their finished products waiting for shipment to go back out. So the sole purpose of this rezoning is to allow for an increase in outdoor storage. Um, the site is well defined by existing vegetation. You may see on that site plan that's on the screen, there's a dotted line labeled building and parking envelope, but that's because from their back, it's all existing vegetation. There's a large mound there. It's all covered with trees and, it, and provides well more than the significant buffer we had already set aside. We did have a community meeting. It was attended by one person who lives directly behind us, uh, and he had one question about an existing tree that looked like it might be threatening his fence. That matter has been addressed. We had met earlier with the Steel Creek Residents Association in a Zoom meeting, presented this to them, and I don't recall there were any real issues um, from that, and no one from that group participated um, in our community meeting. Um, as Dave mentioned, we have a few technical details we're working out uh, with uh, the staff and CDOT, principally the, the illustrations that accompanied our drawing from a survey and the request that we got from the city about showing dimensions. We're, we hope to get that solved tomorrow. It's, there are no issues other than that that we're aware of. Um, I'd be happy to stop at this point, see what questions you might have, but I would like to offer my best wishes to you and your families for happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. Thank you. All right, are there any questions for the staff or the petitioner? There are no questions from the staff. Anyone virtual? Mr. Anyone virtually? All right, so we'll have a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. And a second. Thank you. Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? All right, the next item is item Thank you all 30. very much. 
Thank you. Thank you. Item 37, Petition 2021-135 by Alliance Residential for approximately three and a half acres at the intersection of North Trillion and Matheson, north of Brevard. It's in District 1. The current zoning is general industrial. The proposed zoning is mixed-use development conditional. Staff recommends approval upon resolution of issues around transportation, environment, site, and building design. Um, and so we'll have the staff do their presentation. And then on this one, we have 37, four speakers. Mr. Brown will lead the way, and everyone is in, is in for the petition. So three minutes. Yes. All right. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 2021, 135, three and a half acres on North Trine and Matheson. Uh, the current zoning is I-2, industrial, and the proposed zoning is for mixed-use development, mud conditional. Uh, the adopted future land use in the North Trine area plan does recommend institutional uses for the site. Uh, you can see some of the surrounding land use recommendations are for multifamily, retail, TOD, uh, industrial warehouse distribution, so a pretty wide mix of, of land use recommendations in that general area. Uh, the proposal itself is for up to 340 multifamily residential units. Building height would be capped at 75 feet. Uh, access would be from North Tryon Street and from Matheson Avenue. Uh, all principal and accessory buildings uh, that would abut a network required public street or private street would compromise a minimum of 20% of that facade. Uh, would use brick, natural stone, or its synthetic equivalent, stucco, or other material approved by the, uh, the planning director. Also prohibits vinyl siding, uh, but not on things like handrails, windows, or door trim, uh, and does provide architectural design standards to address building placement, massing, height, blank wall provisions, and roof form and articulation. Uh, staff does recommend approval of this petition, have, have some outstanding issues related to transportation, environment, and site and building design to continue to work through. Uh, while it is inconsistent with that recommendation for institutional uses for the site, staff does feel that uh, given the transitions and, and other recommendations in the area that a residential project uh, of this type would fit the general context of uh, what we're seeing as far as change and transition along that North Tryon corridor, particularly with that intersection there at Matheson. So uh, staff does recommend approval and we'll be happy to take uh, any questions uh, following the petitioner's presentation. Thank you. All right, Mr. Brown. Madam Mayor, Council Members, Colin Brown on behalf of the petitioner. Uh, joining us virtually is Jason MacArthur on behalf of the development team. If you have questions, I think great overview by Dave, um, you know, as he mentioned, essentially converting this very important corner on Tryon Street uh, to a residential and, and more mixed use development. Uh, we have had good good communications with the North End Coalition and representatives of the NOTA NBA, though it is kind of beyond the scope of both of those organizations. Uh, we hosted a community meeting, had attendees, uh, all the feedback was positive. Happy to answer any questions if you have them. Are there any questions for the staff or the petitioner? Hearing no questions. Motion to close. Um, Second. Motion to close. And Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Winston? Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Graham? Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Ajmira? All right, the next item on our agenda is item number 38. It is petition 2021-139 by Boulevard at 1800 Central for approximately seven-tenths of an acre located at the south intersection of Central Avenue and Nandina, east of the plaza in District 1. Current zoning is general business. The proposed zoning is Todd um, Transit-Oriented Development Neighborhood Center. Staff recommends approval of this petition. It's a conventional petition. And so we will hear from the staff and um, in terms of our speakers, on item 38, Mr. Carmichael um, will lead our lead off for the petitioner. All right. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 2021, 139.69 acres on Central Ave and Nandina Street. Uh, that's just east of the plaza. Uh, the current uh, zoning is B2, pedestrian overlay, and the proposed zoning is for TODNC with pedestrian overlay as well. Uh, the adopted future land use does call for office retail and multifamily uses up to 12 DUA for the site. 
Uh, so this petition as a TOD, we would deem that as consistent since TOD would allow for all those use outcomes. Uh, this is a conventional petition, as mentioned, it's a TOD NC. Staff does recommend approval since there's no site plan and no conditional notes. We don't have any outstanding issues or uh, items that still need to be addressed. It is consistent with the Plaza Central Pedscape plan. And again, staff does recommend approval and we'll be happy to take questions following Mr. Carmichael's presentation. Thank you. All right, Mr. Carmichael. You're up. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, members of the City Council and Zoning Committee. Um, here on behalf of Boulevard at 1800 Central LLC with me tonight is Chris Branch of the petitioner. He's happy to answer any questions that he can. Uh, uh, Mr. Petten gave a good presentation, so I'm going to skip ahead for several slides. Um, next slide. Um, next slide. Next slide. Uh, one more slide. Thank you. So the request here is to rezone the site uh, to Todd and see there's a new building on the site uh, that Mr. Branch built. There's no intention to demolish that building. Uh, it's, it's brand new as you can see. Uh, the purpose is to buy, to provide, uh, to allow uses allowed in Todd NC district, but also to provide a little bit of flexibility from a parking standpoint for an existing tenant in the site or a tenant that will soon be locating into the site. Um, we did meet with the Plaza Midwood Neighborhood Association to discuss the rezoning request in October. And more recently, we met with the Commonwealth Morningside Neighborhood Association on November 18 to discuss the request as well. Um, it is a conventional uh, rezoning request, so there's no site plan, um, but we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thanks for your consideration. All right, are there any questions for Mr. Carmichael, Mr. Eggleston? Um, probably for staff more than Mr. Carmichael, I was curious to see um, that because this building was just finished, it looks good. Um, it doesn't look like anybody's in it yet, but um, and I'm comfortable with a conventional zoning change that seeks to accommodate the parking. And I certainly take them at their word that they didn't just build a building to now tear it down. I guess my, my question for staff, and this is a conversation we can probably have offline, but I, I do wonder, we are not as far along in the progression of phase three of the gold line as even the silver line. And so I think when we're, you know, working towards when we've dedicated a good bit of money to the silver line design and getting that to 30% design, I think I'm more comfortable with proactively rezoning things to TOD along the future silver line corridor. I also think we need to be proactively bank, land banking for affordable housing along the Silver Line corridor. I do wonder how far down Central Avenue it's going to make sense for us to proactively rezone to TOD based on a phase three of the gold line that I don't think we've had as deep a discussions about. And we don't have as much certainty around, at least from my vantage point. So I, I think that's a conversation we need to have, um, but I will not attempt to have it tonight. Yeah, thank you. And I think that's uh, the conversations that we've had internally, particularly with some of the conversations around the timing of, of both of those transit projects. And when, even though it is applicable per the ordinance, when is it applicable to start putting that on the ground in some of those areas that are a little bit further out from a timeline perspective? Uh, so yeah, I think that's something we, we certainly would like to, to discuss and maybe we can, like I said, talk about a little bit more offline about what that, that may look like. Uh, I, I maybe want to pose this question. It's maybe a little odd from a question from staff to the petitioner, but would we've done B2 PET optionals in the Central Avenue corridor because the PET overlay does allow optional provisions. Would that be a more feasible and reasonable request to opt out of some parking versus the TOD and maybe create a little bit more of that uh, comfort with the zoning district not being something that's transit-oriented versus just a little bit of a relief so that that tap room can open and be open for business.
the office leases end. So that that's the relief. Is that a lease? I couldn't use the the parking. I mean, what is the is the gives you by way of currently right now it, it reduces the requirement oh. yeah it, it right now the o'clock and we'd like them to be able to open up four or five o'clock on those nights. and um the todd nc gives us the flexibility that they just during off hours between the Got it. Okay. Thank you. Other petition. Did someone, it was someone virtual, did someone virtually say? Mr. Phipps, and then we'll have a motion to close. Comment similar to, I guess, what Mr. Eggleston was saying about the firm at present and also the future silver line routes, particularly. We, 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 we're, we're trying to make analyze. That's what's that's that. And but, it but, does get final. Yeah, but suppose these these I think that um we will have to I, I mean nothing fun. static. I mean yeah. in in this in this time and day District plan does recommend residential and re v v adding the parcel just to the west. Do have a 12 foot multi use path, an 8 foot planting strip along North Tryon Street, as well as a 5 foot sidewalk and 8 foot planting strip along the abutting driveway. Also illustrates a proposed planning. Area to provide a little bit of additional screening. Uh, building materials will be a combination of brick, glass, natural stone, stucco, ephus, uh, etc. And provides architectural standards addressing blank walls and roof form and articulation. And also provides 10 foot screening area along North Tryon Street and a 5 foot screening area along the eastern property line, as well as a 10 foot screening area along the south property line to the existing uh, shopping center there. Staff does recommend approval of this petition. Do have some outstanding issues related to transportation and site and building design. Uh, it is consistent with that plan recommendation for retail uses, uh, but it's inconsistent with that recommendation for residential uses for the site. Uh, so overall, the staff feels that it's an, an appropriate request and does recommend approval. Uh, we'll be happy to take any questions following Mr. Moore's presentation. Thank you. All right, Mr. Moore, I'm assuming that you're coordinating for the three minutes for the remaining speakers. Is that correct? Um, okay, Mr. Moore. Let's see. I know that you're logged in. Can I? I don't see him on the screen. So, I, I, Mr. Moore, we've got your we've got your presentation up on our screens here, but I can't see it. 
Okay. Can you hear me now, Madam Mayor? Oh, thank you so much. Okay. I was beginning to worry. We had lost you. No, okay. no, thank you. Thank so you so much, Madam Mayor. So you coordinate everyone's, rep all of the speakers? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. All right, you have three thank minutes. You. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members and Zoning Committee. My name is Eddie Moore with McAdams. We are assisting Gabe Thompson, George Alexandros, and Doug Pyle with Hutton. Next slide, please. Just a quick sentence or two about Hutton. Hutton is a fully integrated commercial real estate development and investment company. They, are, they focus on developing, acquiring, managing, and constructing a variety of commercial and multifamily properties across the U.S. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the site. Dave's done a great job in explaining uh, the site itself. This is a uh, out parcel uh, of the shops at Mallard Creek, and it's in between an existing CVS and a 7-Eleven that is under construction. And also a little bit further to the east, we have the uh, Pavilion, Pavilion Village Apartments. Next slide, please. Uh, the site is zoned NS, and we are requesting B2 CD, uh, and that is specifically for an automated car wash. Um, it's site was zoned back in 2007, and the site was sat vacant for you know, many years. Um, next slide, please. And Dave went over the Northeast area plan. It is recommended for residential and commercial. Uh, that change came about back in 2007 when the site was zoned to NS, but the Pavilion Village apartments have been constructed and this is the last out parcel on the site. Next slide, please. And here's the site that we have North Tryon is to the top of the top of the slide. CVS is to the left, 7-Eleven is to the right. And then the center itself is to the bottom of the screen. Um, from the orientation of the site, we have pushed that along North Tryon Street. And with that, we're able to get all of the, the parking, the cleaning stations, and the other drive aisles along either the side or the, the rear of the site. So when you're driving along North Tryon, you'll see the, uh, the building itself. Next slide, please. And just have a couple of illustrative illustrations uh, here facing North Tryon, and then also what you'll see from internal to the site uh, where the vacuum and cleaning stations will be held. Next slide, please. And here are the entrance and exit elevations. And be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you for your time this evening. All right. Are there questions for the staff or the petitioner? Mr. Phipps? Uh, yeah. Um, there's an existing uh, car wash attached to the recently opened 7-Eleven that's about a few hundred feet from this proposed site. I was just wondering, <laughs> you know, it seems kind of, seems kind of, you know, duplicitous to have a couple of car washes that close together. We'd like to get your reaction to that. Sure, uh, Hutton is fully aware of the 7-Eleven and the car wash. Their car wash is a little different. That is accessory to the 7-Eleven. This is specifically for a car wash and the way the, the, the site plan is set up and, and, and designed, it can accommodate more cars and actually have a greater chance of you know, getting those folks in and out much quicker compared to the 7-Eleven site. So at the 7-Eleven, we're gonna be you know, really focused in on gas you know, what's inside the store here, it'll be all coming from Okay. Are there any other questions for the petitioner or the staff? Yes, Mayor. Yes, Ms. Johnson. Thank you. I thought my hand was up, but thank you. I have a question for staff. A month and a half ago. For Dave. Yes. Oh. Is he ready? I'm sorry. Yes, he's ready. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. So, so Dave, we just approved item number 28, petition 2021-187. And the location description looks almost identical. Can you tell me where this petition is in relation uh, to the one that we just approved and if there's any correlation between the two? 
there's no correlation between the two, uh, but this one is just north of that petition. This is all, basically if you go up Pavilion Boulevard past the, the amphitheater all the way up to Tryon Street, this petition is in just to the uh, east of that intersection. And the petition earlier that you had mentioned that was approved is a piece of property that's behind the pavilion, uh, which is accessed off Pavilion Boulevard, but uh, it's just, just south of this, not probably less than a, a quarter mile, maybe. Okay, thank you. The, the, uh, the description is just um, almost identical. So I was just curious um, if these two petitions were related. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, are there any further questions? Hearing none, um, I believe... Mr. Phipps, do I have a motion to close the public so moved, hearing? Madam Mayor. Yes, I have sir. a second. Thank you. Um, Mr. Phipps. Yes. Mr. Eggleston. Yes. Mr. Newton. Yes. Mr. Driggs. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. Ms. Watlington. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Bakari. Yes. All right. The next item is item number 41. 40 was deferred. 41 is um, petition 2021-144 by LEHNC Statesville for approximately an acre located at the northeast intersection of Statesville Avenue and Mar Norris Avenue is in District 1. The current zoning is single family residential and the proposed zoning is urban residential conditional. Staff recommends approval upon the resolution of issues on transportation and technical revisions necessary. Um, so on 41, we have, we do not have any speakers on 41, Madam Clerk. No, ma'am. All right, no speakers on 41. Oh, we'll, I'm sorry, yes, ma'am, we do on 41. Wait a minute. On 41, we do. Colin. Oh, Mr. Brown would like to. Okay. Mr. Brown will be up for the petitioners. And Mr. Petten, would you go ahead and get us started? All right. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. 2021 144.91 acres on Statesville Ave uh, at the intersection with Norris Avenue. Uh, the existing zoning is R8, single family residential. And the proposed zoning is for UR2, urban residential conditional. Adopt a future land use from the Statesville Ave Corridor Plan. Calls for residential uses up to 12 dwell DUA dwelling units per acre for the site. Uh, the proposal with this petition would uh, allow up to 21 townhome units. Commits to an eight-foot planning strip and six-foot sidewalk along both Statesville Ave and Norris Ave. Uh, also provides visitor overflow parking spaces uh, within the site, as well as an ADA-compliant bus pad along Norris Avenue. Walkways or driveways will be provided to connect all residential entrances to sidewalks along public streets. Also provides a minimum of 4,300 square feet of open space with benches and landscaping. Uh, architectural details uh, are also included uh, to, to, for the different buildings uh, that are being proposed on the site, uh, particularly uh, end units as well uh, that face uh, Statesville Avenue and Norris Avenue. Uh, since their frontages are not facing that, those would have corner units our corner elements that would include things like wraparound porches or stoops uh, to provide a, a more of a front-facing facade, even though we'll be looking at the sides of those uh, from those frontages. Staff does recommend approval of this petition. Do have some outstanding issues uh, with transportation and some requested technical revisions to work through. Uh, it's consistent with the recommendation for residential use, but uh, is inconsistent with that uh, dwelling unit per acre recommendation of 12. This one comes in at uh, about 22.85, uh, but given some of the ongoing development in this corridor, particularly just north of Camp North End and Bright Walk, uh, staff feels that it's uh, an appropriate uh, uh, request, and we do, like I said, recommend approval. Happy to take any questions uh, following Mr. Brown's presentation. Thank you. All right, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Madam Mayor Colin Brown, on behalf of the petitioner, um, I believe Nish, Nick Lishrong from the development team uh, is on if you have questions. I think Dave covered everything well in the presentation. Uh, we've had some good interaction with the Northern Coalition. Um, I think folks are generally pleased with the density being discussed here in the product type, so just happy to answer questions if you have them. All right, are there any questions for the petitioner or the staff? Hearing no questions, do I have a motion? motion to close. Do I have a motion to close. Do I have a second? Mr. Second. Driggs, uh, Ms. Johnson, thank you very much. 
Um, and we'll start with um, Kylene here. All right, so Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Um, Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Thank you. The next item is item 41, 40, I'm sorry. Item 42, um, and it is 2021-145 by Embry Partners for approximately three acres located on the south side of Scaly Bart and South Boulevard. It's in District 1. Current zoning is transit-oriented development transition. Proposed zoning is transit-oriented development community center. Staff recommends approval of this petition. And um, our speakers are Ms. Grant. I'm sorry, right there. Thank you. Um, so we'll have a staff presentation and then we'll go to Ms. Grant. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 2021-145, uh, approximately 3.24 acres on Scaly Bark Road and South Boulevard. Uh, the existing zoning is TODTR. The proposed zoning is for uh, TODCC, Community Center. Adopt a future land use from that Scaly Bark Transit Station Area Plan in 2008 does recommend transit-oriented development mixed use for the site. Uh, the TODTR was uh, recommended as part of the alignment rezoning under 2019-102. Uh, this request would take that up from that TR, like I said, to a CC. Uh, staff does recommend approval of this petition. It is a conventional request, uh, and it is consistent with the Scaly Bark Transit Station Area Plan, uh, and we will be happy to take any questions you may have following Ms. Grant's presentation. Thank you. All right, Ms. Grant. Good evening, Mayor Lyles, members of council, members of the zoning committee, Bridget Grant, land use consultant with Maureen Van Allen, working on this petition with Jeff Brown. Pleased to be representing Brad Knoll with Embry on this petition. Um, as Dave mentioned, it's conventional in nature, so we don't have a site plan. We did meet with adjacent single family residential property owners and had a very positive meeting, and we are happy to answer any questions. All right, any questions for the staff or the petitioner? Motion to close. I have a motion to close. All right, um, Mr. Bakari. Oh, who has a question? Does someone? I said second. I'm sorry. She said second. Oh. oh, the second to the motion to close. Thank you so much, Ms. Johnson. All right, Mr. Bakari. Yes. Mr. Driggs. Yes. Mr. Eggleston. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Watlington. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. All right, the motion passes. The next item is item 43, um, petition 2021-147 by Providence Group Capital, approximately three acres located on the northwest intersection of Clanton and Pel Pelton Street, west of South Boulevard in District 3. The current zoning is transit-oriented development community center, proposed zoning is transit-oriented development urban center. Staff recommends approval of this petition and our speakers are Keith McVeigh as well as the staff, and Mr. McVeigh will coordinate all of his four. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you, Madam Mayor. 2021-147, 3.1 acres. It's on Clanton Road, Pelton Street, uh, just west of South Boulevard and east of South Tryon Street. Uh, current zoning is TODCC. Proposed zoning is to move up to a TODUC. Uh, the Scaly Bar Transit Station Area Plan does recommend transit-oriented development mixed uses for the site. Uh, it, staff does recommend approval. This is a conventional petition. It is consistent with that area plan recommendation. It's within a half-mile walk of both Scaly Bark and New Bern, uh, so that UC district is applicable there. The staff does feel it is appropriate location for that district. So uh, with that, uh, we'll take any questions you may have following Mr. McVeigh's presentation. Thank you. All right, Mr. McVeigh. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of council, members of Zoning Committee, Keith McVeigh with Moore, Van Allen, assisting Providence Group Capital. With me tonight virtually is J.Q. Freeman, Eric Nichols, and James Cole. As uh, Dave mentioned, consistent with the Scaly Bark Station Area Plan, uh, recommending uh, that recommends transit supportive uses. Happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for the petitioner on item 43? Petition. Any questions? Do I, do I have a motion to close and a second? Second. All right. Um, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Um, Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. 
Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Thank you. Next item is item 44. Uh, rezoning petition 2021-148 by K Spade Ventures for approximately 114 acres located on the east side of Harris Houston Road, north of University City Boulevard. It's in District 4. The current zoning is single family residential, three units per acre, and the proposed zoning is single family residential, four units per acre. Staff recommends approval of this petition, and we have um, the staff presentation, followed by Ty Schaefer, who is virtual from Robinson Bradshaw. Mr. Schaefer, you with us virtually? Got you. I see you on line. So we'll go ahead and start with the staff presentation, and then Mr. Schaefer, you'll have three minutes. Great. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 2021-148. Uh, it's 114, almost 114 and a half acres. It's located on the east side of Harris Houston Road. North University City Boulevard and south of North Tryon Street. It's just there along uh, the county line uh, with Cabarrus County. Uh, the adopted, or excuse me, the existing zoning is R3. Uh, the proposed zoning is for a conventional R4. The adopted future land use uh, from the Northeast District Plan to recommend single family uses up to four dwelling units per acre, as well as single family, multifamily, and office uses up to eight dwelling units per acre, and greenway uses for the site. This is a conventional petition, so there's no uh, outstanding issues, no site plan to speak of. Uh, it is a, uh, like I said, R3 to R4. It's consistent with the Northeast District Plan, uh, although it is inconsistent with those greenway uses uh, that are recommended for the site. However, staff feels that uh, those uh, R, that R3 to R4 is a, a reasonable request and is, like I said, consistent, and we do recommend approval. Uh, no outstanding issues, as mentioned, and we'll be happy to take questions uh, following Mr. Schaefer's presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Schaefer. Good evening. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. We can. Great. Thanks. Uh, Mayor Lyles, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members, Zoning Committee Members, Ty Schaefer, we're pleased to represent the petitioner. Um, very pleased the staff recommends approval of the petition. Thanks to Dave uh, for his presentation. Uh, this is a conventional petition, uh, R3 to R4. Uh, we do have Keith Sade with the petitioner on the uh, virtual uh, list. Uh, we do have representatives from the project team as well. We're happy to answer any questions that you have. All right. Um, are there any questions for the petitioner or the staff? <coughs> okay. Hearing no questions, do I have a motion to close? So moved. And second? Second. All right. Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yeah. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. All right, the next item is item 45, petition number 2021-153 by Galala by Galaga Investors for approximately 17 7 Sorry, it's getting to be a really big song day. Approximately seven acres located on the south side of Tyvola, west of Old Pineville, that's in District 3. Current zoning is general industrial. The proposed zoning is Todd. I'm um, Transit Oriented Development Neighborhood Center. Staff recommends approval of this petition. Mr. Brown represents the petitioner um, following the staff presentation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Our last petition of the evening and last petition of the calendar year to present to you all is 2021-153. Uh, it's approximately 7.17 acres located on the south side of Tybola Road, just west of Old Pineville Road and east of I-77. Uh, the existing zoning is I-2. The proposed zoning is for TODNC. Uh, the adopted future land use for this site from the Tybola Archdale Transit Station Area Plan recommends office, retail, industrial, warehouse, and distribution uses for the site. Uh, so staff does find that to be inconsistent given that we don't uh, have those industrial uses or the residential uses uh, that would be uh, put forth with the TOD 
type of outcome, but staff does feel that uh, it is a, uh, an appropriate request that we do support uh, and recommend approval of the petition. It's conventional, so there's no outstanding issues or site plan. It is within that one mile walk of the Tybola Station along Old Pineville. Uh, so it does fall within that TODNC applicability. And again, we'll be happy to take any questions uh, following Mr. Brown's presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Mayor, Colin Brown on behalf of Galaga Partners, like the 1980s video game. Um, happy to be here tonight. As Dave mentioned, this is a conventional petition. Uh, kind of surprising to me also how quickly the transit-oriented development demand has moved down um, the blue line. As you, if you drive out here on Tyvola, you know some of that is actually already happening. Uh, so we think this is a nice opportunity to trans start transitioning this area from the, the kind of very big industrial office footprints to um, things that are more in line with our, our transit station areas. Uh, happy to answer any questions you have. Are there any questions for the staff or the petitioner? Motion to close. Second. We have a motion to close and a second. Um, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Mr. Bakari? Yes. Mr. Driggs? Yes. Mr. Eggleston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Watlington? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Okay. That concludes tonight's zoning meeting. Um, thanks to everyone for their participation. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. And second. I have a second. Second. So to, as we adjourn, so at the end of the day, and really appreciate everyone. So happy holidays, holidays and a good night. A good night. Happy holidays. <laughs>